don't like Mondays, you know. Some people want to shoot the whole day down. I am not one of those people. It is Monday. It's the start of a brand new week. It's a fabulous week because it is going to be, well, it's Thanksgiving week for a start. That means it's Black Friday week. And that means the Black Friday deals are kicking off in the morning, uh, which is fantastic. Now, I'm joined by a very special guest. They, these shows with Jan, it's like, they're like buses, Jan, aren't they? We waited months for one and then seven of them come along all at the same time. <laughs> and I am not so sorry about it how are you today i am absolutely fine thank you joe i'm thrilled to be back again and i love working with you you know that we have a right laugh we certainly did last week anyway and then i'm back again next week as well i think we're together again next week so yes bring it on yeah it's going to be uh, great uh, make sure you get yourself over to the website uh, to check up on all of the deals that are in the show because there is lots in this show where do you have to go jan to the website. The website. The in website. In so I've been practicing, can you tell? Yeah. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so make sure you get yourself over to the website and have a look at all the deals that are coming out. Craftscompanion.co.uk.com.eu. There's a lot in this show today, Jan, isn't there? There is. I'm getting, I get excited. You know, every time a new list of products come for the shows, I just get excited all over again because I've said like many times before, it is not like work. I consider it playing when I'm doing my crafting and I'm doing my prep. And honestly, I don't consider it to be a job. I feel very, very lucky to do something that I love. I really do. So I can't wait to get started. Started, Joe. Oh, it's going to be yeah. absolutely fabulous. There's loads, but we've got to kick it off with the Monday Mega Deal. Of oh, and there is absolutely loads. I'm going to quickly wish you through what you're going to get in here because. Well, it's basically uh, like you're getting what well, you're getting all of this wonderful stuff, and you're getting the tote as well. So let me take you through uh, exactly what you're getting included. So you are going to get uh, the edge crimper tool, which is this one just here, which is absolutely uh, awesome. Then you're going to get as well all of the tweezers, and these are super super awesome. You're going to get these scissors now. I've got these scissors at home. They are incredible. These are the ones that I actually use the most out of the three pairs we do. You're going to get a craft knife included, and you're going to get some purpose glue as well and you're going to get the gorgeous caddy uh, to store it all in as well jan what an awesome deal this is do you know they're ideal for it's called a desktop caddy for a reason joe because it is great to just have that sat i know everybody's got a set of core tools that they sort of their go-to tools and i know you've mentioned many times about my tweezers i use them a lot you love your tweezers. and to have all those different types of tweezers it's it's each one's got its own purpose uh i tend to use the open ones a lot and I love the ones that are already closed, the sort of the squeezy ones that are... Squeezers? Uh, yeah, you have to squeeze them to open them. I think they're brilliant. Which is those ones just... The, no, these ones there at the bottom. The bottom ones, yeah. Yeah, so if you're wanting to hold anything in place, particularly if you're building decoupage or anything like that, absolutely great. If you're emb heat embossing, they're great for just holding the corner of your card so that you can get your heat tool on the go. But honestly, just to have that sat on your desk with the one with the bits that you use most, because if you're anything like me, got hundreds of bits of tools all over the desk, but to have that just at the side of you with the bits that you use most into it, they're there to grab, you know exactly where to find them. Mm, absolutely. I love the mini shovel, as I call it. That's not what it's called. It is called the flat end tip. Or the mini shovel. The mini shovel. It is a very mini shovel. They almost look a bit, um, a little bit surgical, don't they? They do, yes. They yeah, do. Scalpel, yeah, we just please. need a scalpel in yes, there, don't we? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, but definitely, uh, if you want to grab that, do. It's a Monday Mega Deal. Monday Mega Deal means it's only going to last 24 hours. So most of the deals that we bring you here on Crafts TV, they are around for 48 hours. This one, though, just for 24 hours. So definitely grab that. Right, definitely a great time to have a little gossip with me as well. If you want to drop into the comments, you want to have a chat, maybe you've got some of the stuff that's coming up in this show i'd love to know what you love using it for uh, lots of people saying hello already uh, roberta is in connecticut elizabeth in illinois a uh, wander in the in new york diana from indianapolis indiana there's a lot of a's in there it's a bit of a tongue twister <laughs> that one uh, brigitte's in the netherlands i see patty in michigan deborah in ohio ray in tennessee as well um Susan says, the company I work for has Monday in the name. We embrace the Happy Monday philosophy. Happy Monday, everyone. Happy Monday, Susan. Yeah, I think Monday's good. Well, we don't work conventional Monday to Friday, do we, uh, Jan? No, so therefore, we no. don't have that Monday feeling. It doesn't work like that here, does it? Yeah. No, it absolutely doesn't. Right, let's dive in then and see what's coming up in the show. The Gemini, Gemini <laughs> layerables, Gemini, Gemini, <laughs> layerable stamps and dies, a Christmas collection with 
with 110 elements. Uh, this is what we are going to be looking at first. Let me just grab the boards out for these because these are a really big comprehensive uh, set of stamps and dies that you've got in here that are going to, going to enable you to make awesome toppers whether you're using layer one layer one and two you've got lots of different options when it comes to popping these together so what you've got is you've got the reason for the season in here uh, you also then have a festive flurry which is that one there you have got decorative garland festive reef gem uh, festive foliage and decorate the tree as well. 68 pounds uh, if you are in the UK. That becomes 54.40 uh, if you're in the US. Am I missing one? <gasps> I've lost my beautiful baubles. Oh, hang on. Let me find it for yeah, you. I think there's a robin as well, oh. I think. Anna, oh, the gone? robin has gone. <gasps> There's oh. the beautiful baubles. Uh, there they are. You're going to get those uh, in there uh, as well. I was trying to shortchange you there. Uh, you see, I was trying to keep the baubles back. Uh, but you'll get all of those. £68 in your, uh, if you're in the UK becomes 54.40. Oh, I'm dropping everything today. 54.40 if you are a uh, platinum member in the UK. $90 becomes $72. Uh, if you are a platinum member across in the US. Uh, there is a multi-buy available on these as well, if you uh, should so wish. Any two of £25 or $35, which is awesome. Uh, you can go for them individually as well if you want to. Uh, it's completely up to you. There's loads of other stuff coming up in the show as well. I definitely would suggest getting yourself across to the website and getting ahead of us. A lot of stuff we may not even get a chance to show you in this show. Uh, we've got these, the Gemini 3D Textured Embossing Folder collection for you. It's a six piece collection at uh, 32 pounds or 46 dollars is your price on those you get six and now six of our newest uh, embossing folders as well you'll be seeing those in more details we go through the show uh, we've got some great double-sided dies for you in the show as well uh, double-sided creator card dies so I mean, if you were having to buy 12 credit card dies, which is in essence what this is, you'd be looking at a lot more than this. Uh, you're getting two for free, uh, basically, in this configuration, which is awesome. Uh, we'll be seeing those in more detail a little bit later. We have got a bagot, bagot, bagot hop uh, uh, on these ones. <laughs> buy one, get one half price. Bug a hop uh, on this. Yeah, I think that's it. Not bog off, bug a hop. Uh, nine options here for you. You can go for afternoon tea. Oh, we're not going to go through those options. I'll tell you what they are. You can go for <laughs> afternoon tea, falling leaves, glitz and glamour. Oh, we are going to go through them. Afternoon tea, falling leaves, glitz and glamour, metallics, perfect pastels, shades and shades of spring, summertime, vintage chic, winter warmers, and that's it. So that was easy, wasn't it? That wasn't too bad. I enjoyed that. You enjoy it next door in the gallery? Uh, and I thought, I think I sort of got them a bit like, whoa, 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 what do you mean? What do you mean we're going to go for all the individual options? <laughs> right, I'd love to know what you're up to uh, on this Monday. I think lots of viewers are uh, getting ready, of course, for Thanksgiving, which is coming up uh, on Thursday. Lots of excitement uh, about that as well. I have really, the Christmas excitement bug has bitten hard this week, Jan. Uh, I think the enormity of having my first Christmas in my own place and obviously I've got nothing yeah. I'm having to really start getting planned like now so I'm getting super excited yeah you've got oh, you've got room for a massive Christmas tree there Joe haven't you have a big are you going to have a big so tall one that goes to the like ceiling a ten, like a nine ten foot one Fans, and it's going to be yep. big yeah real be or artificial real, a real yes. one only because I haven't got enough storage to store it how are you going to get it there are you are you off are you above the ground floor a third floor but so, there's a lift Oh, the lift okay. isn't 10 yeah. foot, so I'll have to, I don't know, maybe I should measure the lift. Yes, maybe that might I be a good idea. Maybe I should get, one, idea. As, you I should get one as big as the lift from like corner to corner, and that <laughs> and way... get stuck. Yeah, can you imagine? <laughs> It'll be it's fine. Hold it up from the outside with a bit with a bit of rope. <laughs> I can do that, get it through the window. <laughs> uh, great idea. Uh, let me know what you're up to today on this uh, Monday anyway. I'd love to know. It's freezing cold here uh, in the UK. Uh, but where are we going to start, Jan? What are you going to take us through first? Uh, we're going to have a look at those layerable stamps awesome. and dice first. Yeah, I love anything to do with stamping and you've got my attention straight away, I must admit. Uh, anybody that knows me knows that I love stamping. But this collection just, ma again, makes it so accessible. And I'm going to bring in our magnetic stamping platform. So if you've got that at home, it works perfectly.
perfect with this collection. So I thought before we start a demo in, we'll just have a look at some samples. Jo showed you the boards of all the components and I'll talk to you about those in a little bit more detail in a second. But just to give you an idea of whether you want to go with a nice, I think this one's about a four by four. So that's that lovely nativity scene, which is two layers of die cut. And then you have the stamps to enhance that die cut. So absolutely beautiful. And then we've got the lovely snowflake one there as well. So that's all done in blues. You've got all those little snowflakes in there to add to your uh, original. You can just see in the center there, you've got that lovely original piece and then the extra ones to go. Then we have that garland again, nice smaller size on that one. All right, so you get the sentiments in the stamp sets as well, you know, so you've always got something to go with it. You don't have to go rooting through to find a stamp to go with it. Oh, there's nothing and worse, is there? There isn't. And then you've got that lovely wreath. So again, that one's been done landscape. It would look just as nice to have, have had it, you know, sort of on a portrait design. Make it as big or small as you wish. And then we've got that lovely festive corner going on there. I'm going to use that one in my first demo. A little bit of an embossing folder behind there. Absolutely beautiful. Mix and match them with things you've already got in your stash. And then we've got the Christmas tree. Absolutely beautiful. And then we've got those baubles, festive baubles. So again, you can make these, you know, sort of big cards, small cards. You could use them as accents on scrapbooking pages, make boxes out of them and decorate your boxes. Absolutely brilliant. So let's show you how they work then. So let me just pop those to one side for a second and bring my set in. This is how the set comes to you. So I'm going to use the festive foliage, especially for our Joe. Because I know he likes his foliage, yeah, don't you, Joe? Foliage yes, just, just for your benefit thank you yes. thank you for that so in your set then you're actually going to get two pieces you're going to get the magnetic uh sorry the magnetic let's speak english jan you're going to get the metal <laughs> i've got that magnetic platform on my mind you see you're going to get the metal pieces so let's just bring a piece up so that you can see that better let me find something to put that on here we go look see it a bit better there so you've got the metal pieces there and then you get a beautiful set of stamps that go with it and anybody that's that's familiar with our layering stamps knows that you get items in there that are numbered so it's a little bit like stamp by numbers so you've got the first part of the stamp which looks a little bit odd because you've only got a bit of it but then when you place the second one in there it builds up your actual finished image altogether so we've got three layers for the foliage and the poinsettia and then you've got two layers to stamp out holly beautiful large sentiments in this one christmas wishes merry christmas and then you've got little jingle bells with the bell there as well so the the crammed full of bits of, of stamp you know there's no spaces in there and these are polymer stamps as well so really good quality there they're going to last you ages if you look after them so let's have a look how they work so i'm going to bring one of my favorite bits of equipment in not on the show today but you've seen me use it before and it is we checked it is in stock on our website awesome. so if you haven't come across it yet it's the magnetic stamping platform eight by eight inches and i'm going to use this to set to, to sort of make sure that my stamps are in the same place so that i can stamp with confidence those layers over the top of each other awesome. so first one then let's just take and i'm going to stamp on some nina cardstock and i've just cut a piece that's almost landscape in its um, it's design, uh, not landscape, portrait. It's a DL card we're going to make today. Awesome. Talking Don't gibberish this you... afternoon, Joe. Sorry? Talking gibberish, aren't I, this <laughs> afternoon? Gee, I, I'm, not, I'm glad that you're, I'm nice that you're making a DL card. That's not what I mean. It's catching, Jan. <laughs> I'm glad you're making a DL card because it isn't a card that we see. No, it's not. Of. And I just, I'm trying to keep trying to do something different each time I come. It's sort of, you know, there's obviously, we've all got go-tos. And I must admit, I'm a seven by seven girl. I love my seven by seven square cards so easy to use but i thought we'll do something different and it's actually an extended deal when i show you the card base you'll see what i mean so what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring in my quick dry inks which should also be on the website they today. are all available on the website We've and i've just chosen had a on those Oh, fantastic. I've chosen three colours that are going to go with this particular stamp set. So I've got two shades of green to stamp all the holly and the branches and everything out. And then I've got the darkest one of the reds, the Bordeaux, to stamp that poinsettia in on top. So let's just pop those to one side. I'm going to start with the darkest layer first. And I'm going to take layer number one off my... Um, 
stamping sheet and then the secret with this is making sure that you work in the same part of your stamping grid every time now i know when i work this out at home I went from that center crosshair there and I went at one, two, three, four, five squares and I put a little dot on the front of my platform with a, a permanent pen just so that I knew where I was going each time. But I've just gone five up from there. I might need to just realign now my piece of paper. Let's have a look. We'll go, um, yeah, I need it further up there. So let's just move that. What I'm going to do is put this onto the card, I think. Awesome so that I can position it a little bit better. So I want this up in the top corner and then we're going to turn it round and stamp the bottom corner. So what I need to do is just make a note. Just excuse my head for a second. I uh, need to make saying, a note where it is there. And saying yep. that she loves her magnetic platform. Oh. Loads of people love uh, their magnetic platform. It's, do you know, it's become one of my favourite pieces of kit. I don't use my other... Um, stamping platforms much anymore even if i've got a little tiny stamp whoo, i just tend to go with that big one right i'm just going to move this over slightly so that we're in the right place because i want it to go in i'm a bit of a perfectionist joe i have to have things in the right place so let's just have a look we'll line that up perfect right so pine uh, pine tree for my dark green ink then and we're going to just be gentle if you're using the quick dry inks they have a foam pad on them okay. so if you press hard you're going to get covered in ink so just really kiss your stamp with that ink pad nice and light so that you don't get it all over the beauty of the platform is if you do happen to get ink on the platform it won't transfer the way it's been designed it won't transfer to your card Bring that one down a bit because we're going to stamp in that corner and then press down. Let that ink absorb into your card. And as I say, this is plain Nina cardstock. So it's got a nice smooth surface there. And then when we release that, you've just got two elements there, which look, as I say, a little bit odd to start off with. But just watch when we layer it up. So again, give that a wipe with my cloth. Take that one off. And then it's just a case of remembering where you had your stamp positioned. So I've actually gone up and we've gone to number 15 on my platform there. So I think it was that one. But we can check just by hovering over that image. Perfect. Yep. Awesome. So then I'm going to go to the next screen. We're going to go a shade lighter and go to Grasshopper. OK, so again, nice and light. All right, and we've got the branches now in there to add to the foliage. And then we've got the green leaves, which are the base part of the um, poinsettia. So when we pop that one down, this is going to start filling in the gaps now. All right, so I don't think you can see just there. I've got ink on the corner of my stamp mm. just there. But the way this is all designed, it won't transfer to my cardstock. It's as if it's been magic. So there's nothing in the corner there even though I did have a little bit of ink on my stamp. And then just give that one a scrub. Take is it that off. All you do for that is them? all I do with my uh, stamps, yeah. Until they get really sort of grunged up, and then I might give them a rinse under the tap. And if for any reason they lose the tacky on the back as well, if you've picked up some dust, or if you're like me and you've got sort of dirty fingerprints on them, just run them, run them under your tap, give them a clean, and then leave them with the back facing up to air dry and the okay. tacky comes back as if by magic it really does it just pops back and they're tacky enough to stick back on so i'm going in the same place again on my platform just double check before i ink it up that it's in the right place and then we're going to go to that gorgeous deep red to fill in our prancettia and the berries so again just light tapping so that i'm not overloading that stamp with ink make sure you've got a good coverage and then when we pop this one down, you'll see it suddenly spring to life because we're actually filling in now the detailed part with the poinsettia. We've got the little holly berries and then you've got a couple of little ribbon uh, pieces in there as well. So when we lift this off this time, just look how well that comes out. Looks beautiful. So I'm just going to give that one a scrub. And then what I've done just to save time is I've done exactly the same again. Let me just pop you this one across. But I've turned it round, turned my piece round, 
and I've done exactly the same again in the top corner. It's fabulously detailed with the three it's together, isn't it? It's beautiful, isn't it? It Honestly, definitely looks like something that's been manufactured, wouldn't you say? To stamp all that individually, Joe, A, you would need a heck of a lot of stamps, and B, the positioning, I don't think you'd ever get it the same twice. You know, you'd have to go for two different versions of it. Mm. If so, you, could you use um, an opaque ink pad and heat emboss in the different stages, or would that not work with these? Yes, I actually, last time I demoed these, I did the nativity scene, and I actually did the top layer in gold embossing powder and it looks stunning okay, so awesome. you could actually um, stamp that top layer in the pigment ink for the poinsettia and then add your clear embossing powder to it would look okay. lovely so I've just decorated that a little bit I've had a, a few little dimensional drops where the berries are popped a couple of centers in and then what we're going to do is I've stamped out one of the uh, sentiments from that stamp set which is the Christmas wishes just there and I've stamped it onto vellum because what I want to do is just pop this round the center and then you can still see elements of the stamp through it then so I'm literally just going to fold that around the center there and then we'll stick it down with one of the tape pens on the back and then I've got some foam pads ready to stick this onto a matte and layer and then we're just going to pop that card together how fabulous so let's just pop that in place there but it's just to show you you know that with those stamps you can take it to any degree this could have equally have been a square piece of card and we could have done that stamping in all four corners to make like a frame so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop that onto um, a matte and layer. This is from our textured card pack, Joe. So I know a lot of people got the chance to grab those last week when we mm. were on. And I think they were on the earlier show. I think actually. Craig had them on, didn't yeah, he, he earlier? Yet. Yeah. So if you've picked those up, they are brilliant for matting and layering. They really are. Um, actually, do you know what? I think it make lovely uh, finishing for uh, the corners of a 12 by 12 scrapbook page, don't they, you? With one yeah, of those in with each corner. Would absolutely be really beautiful, yeah. So it can be extended if you are a scrapbooker you know don't think that these are not for you because you can extend it along there and then what I was saying by an extended DL card was is that this is going to go on the front here but the back of it I've just made slightly wider and all I've done is used a, a scrap of that red card run it through one of my embossing folders at home and we're going to put that one on that side just to extend it a little bit so you've almost got that DL shape at the front but at the back We've got a little bit extra detail there going on. So let's just pop that one inside. Debbie was saying there. that she's become a little bit obsessed with doing cards that are shorter on the front, or smaller on the front than they are on the back panel. Ah! I think you two have got the same idea. You Do know. you know? It was weird, Joe, because like a lot of the customers know that Debbie and I used to work at our Chesterfield store, mm. and we both used to do a lot of the cards for the store, for the demo. And without even talking to each other, we could take the set, a set home that was the same, you know, maybe it was one of Sarah's signature sets, or it could have been, you know, layering stamps like this. The number of times that we came back with sort of very, very similar cards, it was mm. scary. And we hadn't discussed it. We, our we our minds obviously it. just think the same, yeah. Um, Betsy's uh, commented and said, so has anyone told Jan yet what Debbie said yesterday about Jan's old cleaning rag? Uh, we did have a bit of a chuckle, but we want to know how, how Jan feels about it. Go on, enlighten me. Did she not tell you? No, she didn't. <laughs> oh, don't. She what? rang you for an hour. I thought, when I said earlier, did she ring you last night? Is that what yes. you were talking about? I thought we were just talking about the cleaning rag comment. Can we see the cleaning rag first before we might, I'll tell you what she said first because I feel like it's the one that you use for gilding wax apparently the one that I use for you've gilding got, or wax. maybe it's the one that you've got there that you clean your stamps with it, it, which this is everything it. It so does. she said, do you want me to tell you what she said? Go on. <laughs> I do feel bad because I always say when someone tells something someone else has said, you're basically saying it to them yourself. So I feel bad. I'm doing it for the viewers, Jan. I she can't basically, wait. <laughs> she said, uh, yes, we were talking about gilding waxes and how you buff it up and polish it up. Yeah. And she said, yeah, John, Jan's got this really raggedy old cloth that she uses. It's really old. I don't know what it is. It's been a, an old bookcase or something. She's been using it for a daily. <laughs> she's been using it for as long as she's crafting. It looks like like it's nearly as old as she is <laughs> <laughs> and you know what debbie's like she obviously didn't mean it like that no but we I obviously know she doesn't. we obviously there was a lot of laughs going on to be honest debbie <laughs> has seen my other cleaning 
in right this is actually the clean version okay. joe <laughs> yeah this is the clean version that i bring with me when i'm on tv if you saw the one at home it really does look as old as me she's probably right and there used to be pillowcases in a former life right. it's just an old pillowcase that i've chopped up and they are brilliant they mop up they dab up ink they buff up the gilding wax they clean my stamps and then literally i just pop them inside i've got one of those net bags and when i'm cleaning my um you know the little these ones for the blending tools oh yeah every so often i'll just throw them all together on my cloth in one of those little oh, net bags pull the drawstring wash. pop it through the washing machine there you go works a treat yes yeah, so it is it's very beloved my rag betsy you yes. are causing trouble and i love you for it <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh hannah horn says she is currently making christmas soap <sighs> lovely then on to some card making uh, i want to go on a soap and bath bomb making course you oh, know jan yeah and actually i'd love to go on a cosmetics making course as well yeah maybe when the world gets back to normal i'll be able yeah. to go and do one of those denise says she just finished up a christmas card next is decorating the house how exciting yvonne letting me know as well that after this show she's going to be making a large pot of chili to simmer away on the stove all afternoon so oh. the family can meander in throughout the day and help themselves oh i love it when you can smell it mm. during the afternoon i've, I've yeah. got chili for tea tonight have you yeah I have. so just to finish off there joe i've used that second element from the stamp set you can see there that the first layer was the holly and then I've used the second layer here at the bottom just to stamp in the red again and stamp those berries and all I'm going to do is just pop that on as a little accent on there and it's as simple as that okay there we go Absolutely fantastic beautiful uh, and really really effective I think if you had a lot of cards to make Jan uh, these would be an awesome way of doing it wouldn't they you could really get a little production line going don't you think you could because what i didn't mention i've actually just used it as a stamp set if you wanted to raise these elements from your card i've do i used it with the little one but the corner as well don't forget that you've got that perfect die there to actually cut out obviously when it's the right you know face down jan yeah it just cuts out perfectly so if you wanted to cut those elements out and raise those on your foam pads or your 3d gel as well then you could add those on afterwards as an accent that's what the metal dies are there for awesome okay dokes uh, indeedy so uh let me run you through what you're going to get in here as well you're getting all the stamps and dies this is what comes uh it um creates for you i should say i love the fact that you've got sentiments in there and flourishes as well little embellishing dies uh, to create a whole project so you've got beautiful baubles who doesn't love beautiful baubles uh, the reason for the season which is that gorgeous nativity scene there you've got the festive flurry which is awesome it's a little bit art deco that one isn't it the next one we've got here is your decorative garland my mum always used to have a lot of garlands out uh, at Christmas time on pelmets. I know. Lo I, like, God, I love the 80s. Yeah, I like them across the mantelpiece. Right. My mum had a uh, blind, a uh, curtain, sorry, and then big pelmets. Lovely. And I think they might have even been made out of formica, the pelmets. I mean, we're talking... We're talking prime 80s. Uh, we've got the festive wreath in here for you, which is awesome. Uh, and then you've got that gorgeous festive foliage. Uh, and, of course, decorate the tree as well. Many people are doing. When's the tree going up in your house, Jan? Well, we were talking about this. My uh, my daughter sort of, um, oh, all the technology, whatever it is, the, the, the video calls that they make. Yeah. I'm not up with it. Zoom, I'm too old. FaceTime. Yeah, Skype. something like that. I think they use... Um, messenger or something like that yeah. yeah and we were discussing it and traditionally my tree's always gone up on the first sunday of december that's been a thing while the children have been growing up but we were talking about it and we did say that we're possibly going to look at the first of december this year which i think is a Ooh. tuesday it's next is it next week yes yeah it is. so when i've left here next monday it's going to be a case of drive home pop up in the loft and get all the bits and pieces out and get it up there at the first of december the only challenge i've got this year is that I have my new little grandson who of is course. now against the furniture like this, walking oh across dear. the furniture, believe it or not. And <sighs> to be honest, be that tree's gonna be right in his reach. So we were talking about possibly having to anchor it somehow. Maybe like uh, a little so fire, you know, like a down. fire gate that used to get round, that went round, yes. stop the kids getting to a fire. Do you remember the fire guard? Yeah, the guard. Maybe a couple of those. Yeah, we're gonna have to think it through, otherwise it I like can just see him laid underneath it on the floor when it comes down. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope it goes up and stays up, Jan. Oh, uh, <laughs> watch the <this> space. <laughs> I want to remind you again of that awesome uh, Monday mega deal. In here, in what you're getting, you're getting the gorgeous uh, call out all 
all purpose. So, so popular. One of our adhesive superheroes. You're going to get the craft knife in here, which is great. You're going to get the tweezers in here. You've got the mini shovel, as I call it, which is the flattened tweezers. The straight point tweezers, the angle point, uh, and you've got the squeezers, which are the needle point ones as well there as well, which are awesome for things like your decoupage. You have got our fantastic. If you've not tried our scissors, honestly, guys, they are awesome uh, you can cut fabric and paper craft with them i've got these ones are like a pair of like kitchen scissors these ones which are fantastic uh, and you're going to get the edge crimper as well now not only that you also get as well the fantastic caddy that to keep it all in and i love the fact that it all closes down this one as well so if you want to close it down you can you've also if you spill stuff in it you've got a zip in the bottom which i just think is genius so it means that you can get rid of anything else in there you've got pockets on the inside here which is awesome pockets all around the outside somewhere to keep an emergency chocolate bar in there i mean really what more <laughs> could you want? Uh, you're saving 19.94 in the UK, 20.24 in the US, 20% uh, of the stock of this one as well has already sold out and gone. We're having a very, very busy start to the show. Remember that the Monday mega deal only lasts for 24 hours or as long as the stock lasts because it is a time limited offer, which is fantastic. Right, I'm going to move on. I want to share with you uh, some brand new embossing folders that have been so popular since we launched these. I love them. Uh, this one here is your Gossamer Lace uh, 3D embossing folder, which is absolutely beautiful. I think my favourite though in the collection might be this one. <gasps> How awesome is that? It is the leopard, the lavish leopard print. It's almost like a snow leopard uh, is what it reminds me of. It is absolutely beautiful. Uh, we've then got this one here. Now this is your vintage scroll. What you kind of can't really see, it's hard to pick up, is that you've actually got texture in the background as well as the foreground. And because it's a 3D embossing folder, it means that you've got, can you see that there? Because it's a 3D embossing folder, it means you've got lots of different levels of emboss. So it's, it's more like it's sort of sculpted rather than punched is the best way uh, to think about it. This one here is the Peony Bouquet. That's almost got like that gorgeous lattice effect uh, in the back of there. I'd love to see maybe elements of that fussy cut and then decoupaged uh, onto the top of there would look beautiful. Then you've got this one here, which is the Climbing Ivy, uh, which is lovely. A little bit more space in this one. Might work really great as a little um, picture uh, holder, like a little photo clip, that one. Uh, and you've then got this one, the Schmetterling, uh, the Grande Butterfly, which I always say is Ariana's favorite embossing <laughs> folder. But that's a fib really, because I don't know even if she crafts or if she does have favorite embossing folders, I'm not sure it's that one. But if the shoe fits, eh? Uh, 32 pounds if you wanna get that, or $46 gets you all of them, which is great. Six brand new 3D, uh, 3D embossing folders for that price is awesome. Uh, Club Inspire Platinum members, you would get an extra six pounds 20 off of that or nine pounds 20. That would make it 25 pounds or 30, six dollars uh which is awesome i'm not sure it would be 36 dollars i think it would be slightly more than that uh but it's at an awesome awesome price uh, to get all six of them uh which is great and these have been really popular since we've launched these jan and i think they are well i think they're very versatile don't you i think they're something you could add just as a little bit of interest to many many different projects yeah i mean just like that card i've just done joe you know just that little strip of embossing down the side adds another bit of interest like you've just said to your card and a set of textured info uh, for embossing folders there's something that you're going to have in your kit and go back to time and time and time again i bought the original eight by eight textured folders which had things like basket weaving it had a snow one there was um, a distressed look in it and do you know i use them that's what that strip was from on that card it was the leaf vein one that i've just used go to them over and over again and i know these are going to be the same it's those reach two ones that you just keep in your kit and you will use them over and over again now i've got a few samples to show you and anybody that was watching last week we, we actually tackled the leopard print one last week so i've gone with a different one for you today but just to show you an idea of things that you can do with them so again you can just see that one's been highlighted with a little bit of silver gilding wax on there i think which is what we did um, we used black cardstock and gilding wax on the leopard print one last week but then looking at this one as the leopard print, a totally different look. 
So this one's been inked instead, and then just where it's been raised in the embossing folder. Almost looks a bit like cheated, isn't it? Yeah, just gone over it with a slightly darker ink just to bring out the embossing. They look stunning. Little bit of a shaker going on in there, okay, which is what we're going to make in a second. Uh, we're going to use this one. We're going to use that ivy one for my demo. But again, you know, just inked up, highlighting the embossing on there, and then just Add, you know we've all got sentiments in our stash uh, that looks like some of those big sentiments that we launched absolutely beautiful uh, again you know add them to your wording uh, die cuts as well really simple and that one's been extended I love how that one's been done because the centerpiece is actually an extension of the white frame round it so the actual if you can see the detail on there it continues from the white frame into that inked centerpiece so very cleverly done there and then we've got that beautiful butterfly i think we all love the butterflies in there so again just highlighted again and then the last one i picked out was that peony one again stunning that would make a terrific sort of mother's day card get well soon card it's got that real nice feel good feeling to it i think that one love pink and green together so what we're going to do then we're going to have a look at the um Climbing Ivy I picked out for this one today and the reason I picked that was because like Joe said it's got quite a space in the middle of it and we're actually going to create an aperture in the middle and we're going to make a shaker card with this one today and I've got all sorts planned for this one so stay with me because we're going to use a little bit of the aquatints that Joe went through at the beginning of the show and make a background and then we're also going to do some embossing and then if we can fit it all together or I might finish it off the screen we'll see how we go I'm going to put some snow in it Ooh. for the shaker element today rather than um, putting sequins and things in like we you know we tend to reach for so just because it's ivy doesn't mean it has to be green that was where I was at. I like thinking outside Ooh. the box and I like to do something different so we're not going to go green today all right I've gone sort of a turquoisey color so just going to pop it to one side for a second and very quickly show you how I made the background using those aqua tints so if I bring my set in I've got the perfect pastel set here and if you're not familiar in these these are actually liquid inks the water-based ink and they are pure color in there they're beautiful loads of different um, techniques we could do a show just on these alone Absolutely. just to do different techniques but all I'm going to do today is a really quick one just to make a background so I have a piece of uh, this is actually stamping card it could be watercolor card just the same I've got my water spritzer which just has plain water in I'm going to be daring and open my aqua tint little jar there be very careful because I don't want to spill it which I have been known to do the one that I spilled all over me was a red one and I'm not kidding it was before my daughter had had the baby and it spilled this way down my trousers down the front onto the floor and I took a photo of it going down like this does anybody think I'd had the baby by the time I'd done <laughs> proper mop up <laughs> job so all I'm going to do then nice and simple is spray the laughing at me spray my cardstock with some water i want quite a liberal amount of water on there and all i'm going to do with my paintbrush is go in the ink and this is the simplest of techniques that anybody could have a go at and literally just tap it onto Ooh, my like card and just look how it reacts i'm good at making this is a bit like just making a mess i'm good at that honestly i love playing with these joe mm. now i've stuck to one color and i've gone for that turquoisey color in the background because obviously i said we're going to put snow in but this could be any colour. It could be, you know, choose your favourite colour in there. It would look just as nice in the purple. could be pink in the back. It looks very neat. And Most honestly, of yours has gone on the cardstock. Oh, I, I do practice. <laughs> and then you can see how some of it's dispersed more than others. That's just where there was more water. So all I'm going to do, I'm just going to grab something to hold the card with. And then if you just spray where the ink is, can you see how it's now oh, yeah. reacting? How awesome. Beautiful. Okay. And then I would leave that to dry at home. All right. Because we're not at home and we're on TV, I'm just going to dab, dab some of that excess water. I do like to leave them because when you start dabbing them, you can see it does pull a little bit of colour out. But basically, that is the simplest of simplest backgrounds that we're going to use. So I'm going to put the lid on my jar before it gets knocked over. And move that out of the way and in true fashion I have got one that's uh, been done and dry so you can see here we've got exactly the same thing it's just one that's dry so let's leave that one to dry I don't know what's going off in my ear they're making some funny noises 
Hey. So let's just pop that one and give a quick dry on there. And if we get time, I'll show you some other techniques with those aquatints later on as well. Awesome, okay. yes. Hopefully you see that So this is going to be the back of my card. And then I've taken a piece of our Centura Pearl card and I've used one of our stitched um, oval dies. Well, it's the new ones, the new oval ones. And I've cut an aperture in the middle of there. And that's the bit that we're going to actually emboss. Now, I would always recommend cutting your aperture before you emboss obvious reasons if i emboss first and then put my die on to die cut and run it through the machine again it's going to flatten your embossing so always do the die cut piece first and then go into your embossing Top folder tip there jan yeah so i'm just going to work out which is the raise that's the raise bit that side and that's the recess bit so i want the raised part of the folder underneath because that's going to push up through my cardstock and make that lovely emboss detail so we're going to pop that through there it is a 3d embossing folder so let's just bring some plates out we'll grab the smaller ones for this and because it's 3d and it's thicker i need to reduce my plates for the gemini if you're using a machine other than the gemini you'll just have to a little bit of trial and error with what plates you need because it's uh, a wee bit thicker than an ordinary embossing folder so i've got a clear plate at the bottom i've got my magnetic shim and the frosted shim i'm actually omitting that second clear plate and we'll pass that through the Gemini so we've got junior plates going on there large Gemini that's my sort of way I normally work like that at home more than anything uh, and loads then of when people, we bring that out sorry Joe not a problem loads of people talking about uh, the stamps how much they love uh, the stamps as well getting really busy on those Jan uh, Fabulous. I, I'm sure we'll come back to those a little bit later yeah they are very busy so if I just hold this up now see if we can get that uh, see that beautiful it like joe said earlier it's almost sculpted on there with the embossing and if i just flick that round while you're in shot there you can see the deboss see the depth of the embossing on the back of there really beautiful, beautiful. absolutely gorgeous yeah and i love an embossed frame i think it looks so classy yeah and i'm gonna leave it like that i wanted this to be nice and crisp i'm not you could add ink to this but today i just want to leave the, the centura pearl to do its thing this is the hint of silver one to go with our blue and that's all i want to do but what i've done at home is i've die cut using that um same set of nesting dies i've just die cut a little gold frame to match that aperture and just stuck that on ready okay and then we're going to put a piece of uh, acetate in the back there so again we've got that prepped i've got the covering on it which we'll take off just to keep it nice and uh, clean and then take off that uh, tape there and we're going to pop this and secure this behind the actual aperture so that we can put our snow in there she says there we go do you know Oh, it's all right. It's behaving. Do you have you constructed it any differently, uh, the shaker card for the snow than you would for like sequins not, or anything? Not at all. Exactly the same. So awesome. we're just going to cover the opening there with the um, acetate because we don't want anything to escape. And then I've got my foam tape, which is available on the website. And we're just going to. Um, if I was at home, I would probably take time to just follow the aperture all the way around. But because we're working live, I'm just going to make a square. As long as you've got a sealed compartment. So where you put your tape, you make sure it joins together. Any little holes, especially with the snow, you only need the slightest little tiny hole and it's going to escape through that edge. So make sure that it's all secure where the joins are. Awesome. And then we'll take that piece off there. Just pull the, uh, the backing tape off your foam. Keep that nice and... Uh, clear we don't want to get anything stuck to that just yet so I'm just going to pop that off and then we're going to add I've brought some um, some snow and that you can buy that in most of the shops the snow I think we've got some in one of our ranges I do vaguely remember a photograph of you the other day Joe with a caption with the snow yes with it the was snow. that was, was that in one of our signature I think that was from when I think that was from when we launched it uh, yes. yeah it's from the Sarah signature 
Is it the snowflake collection? It is a snowflake one. Yes, yes it is. It's in there. It's the first time we've done the snow as well. It was yeah, very, very popular. Yeah, I don't actually have that collection. So this was some that I'd got at home in my stash. So I've literally just decanted it into a, a little bag. And I'm just going to pop this inside rather than the sequins, just for a change. Oh, awesome idea. And pop that in there. So we don't need a lot in there. And just fasten that back up so that we don't end up with a snow incident as well. And then literally I'm going to pop this one on the back. So that blue one, this is the dry one that I'd done at home. Otherwise my snow is going to stick to everything. And literally I've just cut this slightly smaller than that foreground layer. And we're just going to pop that one now. Make sure it's sealed to that foam tape that we put down. Beautiful. And then if we've done it right, when we turn it over. Oh, I've put a little bit too much snow in, but the idea is... Oh, there can we you go. have too much snow, Jan? Yeah. So you can see there where we've got the snow inside it just for a change. I think it's absolutely okay. beautiful. And then literally just going to make that into a card. So I've got a background card in the same Centura Pearl. I've got a layer of gold mirror card, which you can see, guess where we made the ah, frame from. Being frugal again. Frugal, I don't like Jan. wasting my I good card stock. I stingy yesterday and I got told off. Stingy. stingy. That's stingy. a nice word. Yeah. Stingy. stingy. No, you're not allowed to say that. It's not good apparently. Frugal. Frugal is the word yes. of choice. Not stingy. <laughs> So again, let's pop these down. We're just going to use our, our, our double-sided tape pen there just to lay these down onto the card. And then all I've done is stamped out a little sentiment and a little bow just to, uh, to stick and embellish. So we're going to make sure we're the right way up. We're going to pop that one as our first matten layer. And I think, if I remember rightly, this is, I think it's a five by seven. It might just be a wee bit bigger seven and a half by five and a half because the embossing folder is five by seven yep and then we're just going to pop an extra bit on there and then line that up over the matten layer there and that just pulls out that frame that i made at the front okay and oh, then awesome. I've just stamped out wishing you a sparkling Christmas from one of my stamp sets that was on the desk. I can't, forgive me, I can't remember which one it was. It's usually whatever I'm using at the time. And I'm going to pop that in the centre there. And then just grab that heat gun. I've just brought a little bow just to pull out that blue in the background. Just to pop that one up on the top there we'll pop it central like that at the top and i did think when i was prepping this yesterday if you added if you've got a little bit of gold chain to put at the top here oh, it almost nice. looks like a bauble doesn't it, it does doesn't yeah it? but just to lift you that one up and have a look as i said maybe a little bit i got a bit giddy with the snow maybe a little bit less snow in there and you know what would look really nice was if you just popped a few sequins in with it as well i think i've got some turquoise sequins they would have looked nice just to have an odd spot of color in the background there mm. as well but again maybe a bit more untraditional way of using an embossing folder but they make a fabulous backdrop for some of your other designs on your card so don't be afraid to just pop them in there and just add that little bit of extra texture they're really nice especially if you've got a you know the recipients may be um short sight you know struggles with the sight and things like that it gives them that something just to touch mm. and actually feel that texture on there as well yeah, so that awesome. was the um I've lost it. That was the... The ivy, the climbing ivy. The climbing ivy, ivy. The yeah. The climbing ivy, um, that's it. Who was yep. it here said as well? Someone just said... Oh, I've lost the comment now. Yvonne, uh, the ivy fold would be fantastic with the Woodland Forest collection, the Woodland Friends collection. It would it work would, really well yes. with that, wouldn't it? Let me just yep. pop you back through the designs that you're going to receive. So you're going to get the peony, uh, which is this one here. Uh, you're also going to get uh, that gorgeous leopard print. There's that climbing ivy. It definitely works well to being a frame, I think, the climbing ivy. It does, or doesn't it? sort of framing some sort of topper. Yeah, it works really well that way. I think this one is just beautiful. Uh, it's uh, mm -hmm. Astrid. The lovely Astrid Ewing did this one. And it's using uh, the gossamer lace. Look at how that is... Do you know what? On camera, that is not doing that no justice at all. That is absolutely drop-dead gorgeous. And this one here, um, another one by the lovely Astrid, is also beautiful. I'm not sure you can really pick up just how much beautiful dimension uh, there is in there. Can you see that? It's really, really gorgeous. Let me tilt it that way for you. It's just beautiful. It almost looks like some sort of resin uh, that has been made with it. It's really, really lovely. Uh, and also, uh, this one's been done by the lovely Claire as well, which is a gorgeous, gorgeous big, big butterfly, which I think is beautiful. Uh, they're the six that you're going to receive. £32 
or $46 if you want to get your holds on, hands on those. Don't forget, uh, you can buy all of them individually if you want to as well. They're all $6.99 or $9.95. Any two of them, £12 or $16 as well, which is absolutely awesome. Right, moving on to the Aquatins. This is how they come to you. Uh, the great thing is as well that you get so much, you get 30 mils in each of these. So you're getting 90 mils of awesome uh, ink in every single one, which is brilliant. They are water-based, so it means that you can do an awful lot of different uh, techniques with them as well. I'm gonna run through the different options for you. It's a buy one, get one half price, a bogger hop, as we like to call it. Uh, and you've got in here, afternoon tea, that's got teacup, macaroon and biscuit. You've then got falling leaves, and this has smoke quartz, olive jade, and also the harvest moon in that one. The next one here, this is your glitz and glamour, and you've got aquamarine, amethyst, and the pink garnet. This one just here is your onyx, uh, your metallic, sorry, which has onyx black, sterling silver, and the spun gold. Perfect pastels. Now that one's got moonstone, cosmos, and rose quartz. This one's a shades of spring that contains soft jade, moonlight, and the pink champagne. This is your summertime. Now in the summertime, you've got solar red, emerald green, and the blue topaz. In this one here, your vintage cheek, that's got sage, fig, as well as the peony. And finally, your winter warmers has got starry sky, holly leaf, and red berry as well. Just pick uh, what one you're gonna go for. Definitely get a couple of them, because it's buy one, get one half price. So you'll get what? two of those for $19.50 or $30 there or thereabouts, which is awesome. Really, really busy uh, on these at the moment. And a lot of you own them. Uh, I've done lots of great techniques with them. When it comes to versatility, uh, Jan, I think, is it fair to say that there's not many inks out there that you can do more with than these? Honestly, it's, it's like I always say, the only limit is your imagination with them because it's something that you, you think you do one technique with them and then, then in my brain, my brain then hops to think, well, I wonder if I did it with such and such. I wonder if I tried it with this. And all I would say to you is try it. Just bear in mind that it's water-based. So any techniques that you can do with things like your aqua markers, anything that's a water-based ink, the sparkle inks are water-based, sparkle pens, any techniques that you can do with those, you can do with the aqua tint. So it all sort of crosses over and it all mix and matches. Uh, the colours are absolutely gorgeous as well. There's a fantastic range of colours. So yeah, you know, just have a go, have a play. And that's how a lot of these techniques are discovered in the end uh, it's just a case of playing with them and seeing what you can do and at the end of the day if it doesn't work it's just a piece of cardstock that you can pop in the bin and actually start all over again and what I tend to do with these bits you know you think oh you end up with lots of them I did this one earlier I would either keep it for another card or once it's dry you can die cut elements out of it as well and that's a nice way of doing it rather than die cutting your element and then trying to paint over something that might be a wee bit fiddly do yourself a background first maybe even an A4 sheet have a play with it and let it dry and then die cut so just before we go on to this particular demo I just wanted to give a shout out to one of our lovely lovely viewers oh Joe, yes because please. I've had the most gorgeous card in fact I'm going to bring it in I popped it up on the back here don't know whether Catherine's watching this afternoon but if you are Catherine thank you so so much this lady wrote in to us and she sent me a beautiful thank you card because she enjoyed oh, our flower foaming masterclass on Sunday and she's been playing with her foam at home and she said that she'd made some um, she'd done the pine cone which we did in the class she'd had a go at some of the other flowers with it so fantastic I love to hear from you and the fact that this lady's actually taken time to write in to us and say thank you it is truly appreciated so your card's been up here behind me this afternoon it's gone out on there on show and again I'm not sure whether she is watching or not it's a local lady but if you are Catherine thank you I really do appreciate the gesture Hello. So, Lovely. It is, and it just it just sort of makes you feel worthwhile. I mean, I love what I do. It's not a chore. But I think when people recognise it like that, it just makes such a difference. It gives you a bit of a buzz. So, yes, it was very nice to receive that today. So, coming back to our Aquatints then, I've picked... This is one of my favourite collections, this one. And this is the Glitz and Glamour. And you get the most gorgeous This seems to colours. be the go-to one for most Honestly, of our uh, crafty it, it, experts. It's got such beautiful shades in it. You've got that lovely shocking pink in there. Let me read you the proper names for them. Let me just spin it round. So we've got pink garnet in there. The purple one is amethyst. And the turquoise one is aquamarine. So you might sort of 
remember some of those um, colours from the sparkle ones because they're a similar colour theme that runs through them. But they come to you like this and you get them in the two little plastic um, sort of frames. OK, now I always keep them like this and I'll show you the box that I have mine in. I keep them like this in uh, they're just in some of the storage boxes that you can buy. So I get six sets that fit in here and these are stacked. I do the same with my sparkle links and these are stacked in Ooh, my craft room. So well I've organized, got and I've, I've even got, you know, this is me geeky me. I've even got a little uh, list in there so that I know which ones I've got and which colours are in each particular collection. So this is me sort of geeky jam. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> and then when you've got this little tray here the top one here when you take it off it actually doubles up as a paint palette as well so if you wanted to pop a few drops of your ink here and use it you can literally paint with these so any of those new stamp collections those gorgeous stamps that came out with the new glitter pens uh, that our Fiona had down at um, the TV studios and then we had them here as well I think Debbie had them here um, you know they would absolutely work beautiful those stamps I know there was a unicorn one I fell in love with but oh, you it could was gorgeous, paint wasn't it? From here, pop, pop a little couple of drops, and in each pack, I've forgotten this bit, in each pack you get three of the little pipettes as well. So these are great for literally sucking up a little bit of ink and dropping it into your palette and then just use it with one of your fine paint brushes. Pick it up and you can colour straight in. If colouring's your thing, painting's your thing, you can go for that. Now I'm actually going to go for a bit more sort of messy again. This is me, I'm, I'm always messy and I'm actually quite clean at the minute. But we'll have a go with the pink one because we used the turquoise colour last time. And I'm always very careful with them. You heard about the incident earlier. Yes. We're not <laughs> Debbie going there had again. a rather major incident <laughs> a few weeks ago when we worked together. In fact, she just had her new manicure done oh. and she managed to get liquid ink underneath her new nails. <laughs> Like actually under the actual yeah. nail. Well, it, it is liquid. So, you know, just be mindful when you've got them out. I mean, if you want to keep them sat in the little uh, ridge in the container, then I suppose really you've got them anchored a little bit better there. Let me just bring that back in so that you can see it there. All right. So that is actually anchored in its place now, maybe a little bit better. So what I'm going to do. I've got a piece of watercolour card and we're literally going to create a wash on this one. So I, I mean, everybody works slightly differently, but I like to wet the card first. Watercolour card is actually made to take water. There's a hint there in the name. And I like to just add water to that card, literally from side to side, not saturating it, but wetting it. And you can see the card actually starts to curl a little bit. So you know that it's wet. And then we're going to go straight into the ink again just a little bit and I'm going to start at the top of this here and can you see how it sort of wicks oh, it's magic honestly love it and I'm going to go from the top and what I want the aim is to actually come right down to the bottom and it fade out a bit as we get to the bottom to create that sort of ombre look so just take a little bit of the ink out of there because they're water color water based you can add your water to them okay now then, the one thing I've forgotten to check is whether my heat tool is plugged in. So we'll soon find out. Oh, we're on. We're Ooh. good. Yep, we're good. So let's just bring that round. And then so I want to... So the same ink you've used there in the two different... Yes. And That's all come out of the same pot. You, it looks like two totally different colours yep. I've rimmed. But no, we started quite deep and intense at the top and then just washed it out with the water to get that ombre effect but that is all the pink garnet out of the same ink pot so I want to dry it off just to show you the effect that we can then do and you've seen us do this with the inks with the normal we started out with the distress inks and then I've got my gorgeous sort of spectrum noir water reactive inks that do the same now but you can actually sort of take uh, the ink back out of here as well so what I'm going to do when we've just dried that, it wants to be reasonably dry. Pop that back over there for a second. And then I'm just going to take a little bit of water in my hand and then take it out and just splash it onto here. So I just want a few splatters. And again, this is really simple stuff. Anybody can have a go at this. And like I said to you at the beginning, if you don't like it, it's a bit of cardstock. That's all it is. So we pop that on there and then the longer you leave this the better the effect so let me just mop up 
underneath and then we'll actually uh, dab that top bit off so let me just and again at home I wouldn't be doing this I'd be taking another piece of card and I would be mopping it up with the card but again when we're on the uh, on TV it's sometimes quicker to just get rid of it so let me just give that a dry now just dry that under the back of there and then what I want to do with the kitchen paper is just blot so blot on the top of it and it will actually pull where you've splattered it with water because it's a water-based ink it's pulling out the actual ink, that. the colour so that was stage one of it and then the other thing I've got uh, I was talking to my producer about texture paste and modelling paste when we were talking about the show um, this is just plain white modelling paste so again just to pop a little bit ooh, excuse me Thank you, a little bit on my mat there that's probably <laughs> plenty i always end up with too much and let's have a look at the purple color we'll pop the lid on that one and look at the purple instead the uh, the what, what did we say this one was amethyst so let's give that a quick rinse in there dry it off and then what i'm going to do is again i'm going to go into the pot and i'm just going to pop this into my texture paste all right so you've actually created your own personalized color texture paste now and that's a different color to the one you used on the on the cardstock yes so this awesome. was the pink this is pink garnet this is the amethyst one yeah all right we could it's probably do with a little bit more and the more paste you add because the paste white then obviously it's going to lighten it up a little bit. And is this the same sort of way that you'd use, I know a lot of people talk about adding it to tacky glue to make your own almost like glossy accents. Yes, you could do. Yeah, you can mix it with all sorts of different things. Just just plain white gesso would give you a coloured paint. If you added it, do you think to, if you added it to uh, tacky glue in a little pot and coloured it, would it cause the tacky glue to cure, do you think, if you kept it in an airtight container? Or do you think it might stay wet and allow you to squeeze it out? I think you'd be okay with yeah. it as long as it was airtight. What okay. I would do is probably mix it in an old bottle. Yeah. So I tend to keep my old glue bottles for that. So when a glue bottle's run out, I keep them. And then I can do play with things like that and try it and see. So as long as it, um, it seals again, you should yep. be fine. Okay, yeah. awesome. So now I've actually got something, I know that we've got the two colours on here, let me just move that to one side again. But again, once you start adding texture to something, this will dry now with a texture on it. Oh, so awesome. I wouldn't necessarily work with these two on a project, but you can see how just by adding this, and I've forgotten my palette knife, but if you use it with a palette knife and actually put the palette knife flat and lift it up, you get a really sort of good stippled effect. So if we'd, if you'd imagine, I mean, I picked two, I love this colour set, so I just picked this colour set. If you imagine we'd done the blue background and then did this in a green yep. to make the grass, you've got a really nice sort of background coming along there to sort of make your own scene on. So what I want to do is sort of like, I don't want this to be flat. I'm trying to create some texture in it. And because I've used texture paste, when that dries now, it will actually dry with a little bit of uh, texture on it. You'll be able to feel it when it's dried. So we're just going to leave that to one side. And again, this bit, if you've got extra bits of card, don't waste it. You know, if you water it down a wee bit, I'd literally just pop your card in it. And just look, especially on the glass match, you get that sort of that, I need a sound effect, Joe. You have to go... <laughs> like that because when you okay. pick it up off the mat and it works particularly well on the glass mats can you see the veining in it where it picks it up oh yeah it gets you, that you would imagine it was too viscous to sort of pick it up but it still does it does yep and again you know same thing but a totally different effect and this is i get lost at this point all right so look at that now you've got a different type of background and again because that had some modeling paste in you're going to get a little bit of texture when it dries so it won't be perfectly flat but again two totally different effects and then there was also the one that we did at the beginning with the um just splatting it onto the the wet cardstock gives you a, a, a different look again so that's three different ones. As I say, I could go on for the rest of the day, but I think we'll move on to something else now. Uh, let me uh, see. I was uh, 
<laughs> uh, telling my producer Johnny that I was really tired and the information just wasn't going in. I think that's what Jan could see and she having a little chuckle to herself over there. I was like, you're gonna have to tell me for a third time, Johnny, it's just not going in. Uh, <laughs> I let me... actually. Did you not no. see it? Oh, I thought you could no, see him in the busy. monitor over there and I thought you were thinking, what on earth is he doing? <laughs> uh, let me just share with you again uh, the different uh, options that you've got when it comes to these. Remember, any, just, uh, buy one, get one half price. So make sure you get a two of these because two of them will be less than 20 pounds or less than 30 dollars which is uh, awesome uh, so you've got teacup macaroon and biscuit that's your afternoon tea uh smoke quartz olive jade and harvest moon is your falling leaves collection um this one here aquamarine amethyst pink garnet is your glitz and glamour then we have onyx black sterling silver spun gold that's your metallics Perfect Pastels gives you Moonstone, Cosmos, and Rose Quartz. Shades of Spring gives you Soft Jade, Moonlight, and Pink Champagne. This is your favourite. So I might have guessed you'd like Pink Champagne. Who doesn't? Uh, Summertime uh, gives you Solar Red, Emerald Green, and Blue Topaz. Uh, the Vintage Chic, that's got Sage Fig and Peony. And Starry Sky, Holly Leaf, and Red Berry make up your Winter Warmers uh, collection, uh, which is awesome. Right, I want to share with you next as well, the Monday Mega Deal. Uh, it is this gorgeous tote. I'm going to go through the tote first first before I show you all of the great things you get included in here. I absolutely love it. Let me turn it around the right way for a start, would help. Uh, what you've got here, oh, you've got three pockets. Now the pockets are really nice uh, and sort of deep gusseted. So it means that you can get big things in there uh, and they don't fall out, which is brilliant. So it holds things nicely. This one's got a little, um, a little um, flap on the top of there. And then you've got these all the way around. These are great for having things like your uh, shimmer, you know, like your little powders and stuff, little explosion powders in there. Uh, they're also a good enough size. If you want to store uh, things like the odd marker in there, again, it isn't gonna fall out because you've got that nice deep uh, gusset in there as well. That's not all you get though. You've got pockets on the inside of this one as well, which is fantastic. And of course, two little handles. It's all piped beautifully uh, because of course, it's that quality you'd expect from Crafts Companion. What we're also gonna throw in here for you as well is you're gonna throw in a craft knife with the uh, replacement blades in there which is fantastic uh, we've also got uh, the scissors uh, which are these ones just here they're gonna go in there which is awesome uh, we have also got uh, the crimping tool as well that's gonna go in there uh, we've got those uh, precision tweezers as well so you've got the flattened tips the one that I call the mini shovel uh, you've got the uh, straight point uh, you've got the ink uh, the angel point the angle point and the needle point as well which is the squeezes so you've got all of those in there and we're gonna throw a some tacky glue uh no all-purpose glue in there for you as well uh, all of that 30 pounds or 44 dollars do you know what if you've got a crafty friend in your life maybe just someone starting out what an awesome gift uh, that would be i think that is a really really awesome gift 30 pounds or 44 dollars if you want to get your hands on that one loads of you chatting away as well in the comments Tesha saying, uh, I never used this technique uh, before. I'll give it a try. Uh, Betsy says she loves that background uh, with the aqua tints. Uh, she has all of them. Great tip on the texture paste as well, says Diana. Um, oh, Stephanie says, a uh, lot of people loving your storage of your inks. Stephanie saying, appreciate any organizing tips that help me with my crafty chaos. Uh, Karen and Carol uh, and Susan. Everyone's geeking off together about how geeky your uh, storage is. People absolutely <laughs> love it. Now we're going to move on to something else uh, that's awesome we're going to move on to uh, the double-sided uh, creative cards I'm going to show you them in black and white first and then I'll show you some samples right after of what these make so in here this collection you're going to get oh Christmas tree now what you've actually got here as you'll see is you've got uh, side a side B all of it used together that's what it does for you so uh, you can see here how you put together the mat and the layer at the same time as again here side a side b put it all together gives you that gorgeous lot uh, you've got this one which is a uh, frosted woodland this one was very very popular when we launched this one uh, you've got your baubles as well which are your festive ornaments really really lovely then you've got the pretty poinsettia poinsettia is that iconic christmas flower now isn't it and you've also got oh little town in there as well so you get all of those let me just quickly wish through uh, some of the samples of each of them i've got because i think that it does do them much more justice if you actually see them because look at how gorgeous they are that's those beautiful baubles that's those woodland ones that we uh, showed you just there i love this one it's a really substantial card this one uh, with the snow on there as well i think it's absolutely gorgeous and um, there's lots of layers on that one which i love this one here is a lovely one using that christmas tree as well sort of done as a fold back card which is gorgeous then 
this one, which is the uh, Nativity one. And that's been done with one of our foiling dies on the inside. Looks absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and then again, I've got another one uh, of the Christmas trees here uh, on a sort of uh, side stepper card. So loads of different ways you can use them. The great thing is, it's like you're buying four and we are sending you six almost did four and then five, four and six. Uh, so that's a great saving for you. 52.94, 63.94 is your saving. However, club members can get them today, 77 pounds or $93. Do you wanna get them individually? They're available individually. Uh, you get the best value, of course, when you get them all together. 24.99, 29.99 uh, for one. However, get two of them uh, for 40 pounds or $50. So think about it, you get one, but 15 pounds more, you get two. $30 gets you one, $20 more, gets you two. So however you want to go for them, they really are great value. I think if as well, Jan, anyone uh, is struggling, maybe he's got a lot of Christmas cards to make, double-sided dies always seem to make things that a bit quicker, don't they? Honestly, it's like getting two for the price of one, Joe, because you, you, one pass through your machine and you're getting two sides, so you're getting it all done in one go. So I'm going to have a go with the Pretty Poinsettia one. I'm going to do you a demo, and then I've got a little trick up my sleeve to show you as well. You know, like I like thinking outside the box, what else can you do with your dies? I've got a little trick to show you at the end. So in order to use our double-sided dies, you will need a set of the double-sided plates. Now, I don't think we've got these on the show. To oh, we have got them on the show. My producer's saying we have, yeah. They come in the A4 size for the large Gemini. Uh, they also come in the junior size, the half size for the Gemini Junior. I just happened to pull these ones out. And these work in conjunction with your two clear cutting plates. So from your original set of plates you will just need both of your two clear plates so that's the only things that I'm going to use two clear plates and two double-sided special cutting plates that's all I need for this particular um, setup so let's have a look then what we get so when I take this out of my packet you've got one piece of metal that does two jobs and I love this because anything that saves time has got to be worth the money so normally you would have two dies and you would pass it through the machine to do the first First cut and then you would take it out add it to your second piece of card pass it through the machine to do your second now if we can get in close on this one here you can see that we've got one cutting side on one side of the die and then if you just stay with me while I flip it over slowly you've got a cutting side on the reverse of the die as well so you're getting literally two for the price of one, which is why we can offer you them at such a good price. If you imagine two pieces of metal this size, it's going to increase the price substantially. But because we've got them both on one piece of metal, we've been able to offer them at such a good price. So what I've done is I've chosen two pieces of cardstock. I've gone for a piece of um, Miri card in the gold. That's going to be my outside frame and then I'm going to use some green underneath and I'll show you why I've chosen the green because you might think well she's making poinsettias where's the red we'll come to that in a second so all you need to do is look carefully at your die and you'll work out that one side has got more empty spaces in than the other now the empty more empty spaces is actually your sort of second layer the one that's got all the detail on it is going to be the top layer that cuts sort of the thin frame part out of it so all i'm going to do is i'm going to bring in my plates i'm going to start off with a clear plate and add one of my double-sided special plates i'm going to pop the green layer down and i want the green layer on the one that's got more spaces and if you look closely the edge on the die is actually slightly further in so you can just see on the edge of that there there's a little bit more oh, yeah. space yeah so that's going to go face down onto my green layer and I do like to stick these down she says have we got some tape I think I've got some in my bag somewhere she says do you know Oh, is the tape fairy been Where in there, Jan? Uh, lots of love for the double-sided dies. Bernice uh, says so she loves the double-sided dies. Uh, Shannon says, I can't wait to try out my double-sided dies. Uh, I love all of these. Tote says, Marilyn, I ordered the set of three different sizes. And it helps so much uh, with the organising as well. Uh, Tesha saying, also, lots, still lots of love uh, for that previous demo of Jan's there. 
As well. Have you found your tape, Jan? I have, yes. Awesome. I'm back in the room. Yes, I've got a little bit of tape. Because obviously I don't want these to move when they go through the machine. And then the, 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 the mirror card layer, I'm going to put face down. So I've got the green layer face up because we're going to cut into that layer. But this layer is obviously cutting up this way. So it's going to cut into my card. So I want to put the fancy side face down. And I usually just pop a little bit of tape to keep those pieces in place. And then on top of there, because we've got a cutting edge that's going to cut up through this layer I'm going to put my other special plate on there to absorb that cut and then to make up my final sandwich we're going to put the, the clear cutting plate on top pass those through the Gemini now the large Gemini we've got 18 seconds the Gemini Junior we've got nine seconds and you, you just watch how much it's cutting in that space of time the intricacy of the cuts are amazing so let's just pass that through there they will fit through the Gemini Junior, so if you have got a Junior, all of these dies fit through the Junior. I just happen to have picked up the uh, the larger plate, so uh, we're just going to release. Don't forget as well, you can pop these through your MIDI, Leanne was explaining to us as ah. well, which is exciting. Do you know, I uh, haven't had a chance to have a play with the MIDI yet, Jo. Uh, the double-sided dies will go through without the, need for the, double, without the need for the double-sided plates. That's uh, even better. So uh, it was on Leanne's Facebook, I believe, the information about the plates. Brilliant. And that. I think it's just the folder on its own with maybe one of the shims on the outside but yeah. do check uh, her um do check her uh, facebook page for that so all i'm going to do then is just lift up one side and i think this is the gold side and just gently tease it out of the die there and we'll pop the bits out in a second and then on the reverse side we've got that green layer and again, we'll pop all the pieces out in a second. So we get the die brush is the quickest way I've found with these and just roll over the top. And now we're gonna, we are gonna have bits flying everywhere now. So uh, we'll clean up at the end, I promise. So just to take all those pieces out, um, just just take your time obviously we, we always end up rushing when we're demoing but just take your time at home I know a lot of people say that this bit's quite therapeutic when they sit and pop all the pieces out so it's either a love or hate part of your crafting it's I know some people crafting, that detest it's the, it's it the only bit that I'm good at to be honest is Jan. it oh I'm a champion poker out of me oh well let's say no more on that <laughs> So again, go through, pop it all through, all right? And then I'm gonna do the same with the gold layer. Again, all those pieces cut. I always go for the middle when I'm demoing because if it's not gonna cut, it's usually the middle section that's not uh, cut through properly. If you, for any reason you have any problems with them not cutting through, all I would do is add a cardstock shim between your clear plate and one of your double sided okay. plates, just to add a little bit of pressure. But there shouldn't be a problem. As I say, if I sat and spent the time, all these pieces are cut, all right? It That's just fabulous. takes a little while to pop them all out. So I'm not going to go for all of them because, again, in true telly style, we've got one that I've prepared. But essentially, this piece now fits over the top of the other piece. Still got a few bits floating around. Oh, it's, it's bugging you, Jan, isn't it? You can't just... You, I know. Uh, Jan's a perfectionist, you see. Now so you see, the fact that she hasn't popped them all out is, is going to get I know, to her. I, I know. It. The only I reason I it. haven't done it, Joe, is because I've got one that's ready. But you can see here where there's elements of the green. Let me just pop something behind it again so that you can see there for me. He's going to zoom in for us, look. And you can see the green is actually filling in the elements of the leaf. So let me just bring you the one in that I've done and stuck together because you can see that one much more clearer. That is exactly the same. All I've done is literally stick them together and you can see that green. And then the red comes in next. So I've taken a piece of our gorgeous red glitter card now out of the glitter packs. And when we pop this one Ooh. underneath, can you see how Hello. that suddenly comes to life? So you get really the red beautiful. poinsettia in there, you get the red in the gaps, but the green layer has actually provided all the foliage for you, Joe. Foliage, Yes, indeed. it's provided that there at the ready. So nice and simple. So that's how they were designed. Let me just get rid of... Uh, all that sort of confetti off there so that we've got somewhere to work. 
Uh, Loki, Loki loving your double sided dice. It was Mary uh, of, uh, from Tennessee uh, says, I love my double sided dice. Uh, they make card making so easy. Um, also, Tesha says, double sided dice cut your time in card making by half. They are wonderful. They Bernice do. loves them uh, as well as uh, Shannon as well. So lots of love for them uh, across on social media. If you've got uh, any, uh, if you've got any of these collections as well, I'd love to see some pictures of things that you've been making. Oh, they would look uh, fab. Them. Yeah, you can send them into us very easily uh, by email is studio at craftscompanion.co.uk studio at craftscompanion.co.uk is where you need to uh, send those pictures in to get in touch with us so all i've done because i'm working on glitter card i've used a little bit of my wet glue all right just to get a better stick and this piece is cut exactly the same it's just been cut with the guillotine exactly the same size as the one that's been cut from the die and then just give that what i normally do at home is i use my brayer in fact oh, okay i just happen to spy one look and i usually give it a good oh we've got <laughs> red on the back <laughs> that's know? why i color coded it now it's color do you know? i should have checked that it was i'm glad i didn't do it on the front joe Can you imagine there we go it definitely wasn't gonna be clean i thought that when you picked it up did you ah, yeah. i see i'm too trusting you really are and what it does is it gives Debbie you a really good that's seal what it was. okay i think she was actually using that one of her embossing folders yesterday <laughs> not that i'm gonna dob her in and then what i've done is i've just cut i've used one of our scoreboards again such an easy way of making a box this time it's coming up to christmas gift boxes galore i refuse to pay the silly amount of money that they charge in the shops for gift boxes when you can make them really quickly and also the thing is when you make yourself you make them to the exact yes. size that you want them you do you don't ever get a gift box that's the, the perfect size do you it's either too shallow or too deep yep. too wide too narrow too long uh make it yourself yep. you get so exactly you, you, you know use it. your grids on your mats to work out how big you need them to be in this case i worked from the size of my topper that i've made with the dies and i've just left a half an inch all the way around so i've literally got this all ready we'll pop it together and then i'm going to decorate it and then I'm going to show you my little trick. Okay. So let's just pop that one together. I've already stuck the base together because you've seen us make the boxes hundreds of times. So we'll pop that together quickly. And this is the red Centura Pearl. And I don't waste my Centura Pearl at the bottom. I usually use a plain cardstock for the base. Use the nice pretty cardstock for the lid. Pop that together. And then we're actually going to put this one on the top here. All right. So... I don't know whether it's going to stick now. So we'll just literally mock it up and I'll stick it together later because that awesome. ink's wet on the back. But all I've done literally to decorate it, again, is I've stamped out a sentiment. We'll sort of someone very special at Christmas. And we've got our bow there. And again, you've got, like Joe said, you know, tailored gift boxes to a person. You know, if, you, if they've got a particular favourite colour, you know, yeah, it's poinsettias. But I think, yeah, wouldn't it look fantastic in sort of silver and purple? You yeah, know, absolutely. it doesn't have to be traditionally red. No. But just before we finish, let me show you my little trick because I was playing with these and I found out, I've got to try and remember what I did now. But all I've done is I've cut like we did at the beginning. Let me bring that plate in so that you can see a bit better. And I've just used plain cardstock this time. This is actually our stamping card because it's a really good way. I wanted some thickness to this. And what I've done is I've cut it twice. So there are two layers of what we cut in the gold. And there are two layers of what we cut in the green. So when I did that original die and we cut out the gold layer, I've just put it through twice. So I ended up with two of the equivalent of this layer for the front and two of the equivalent of the back layer. So I've actually got four layers stuck together. What I'm going to do now is use this as an embossing folder because I've got the thickness, I can actually emboss. Ooh. So if you've got a, something decorated with that as a die, you could then maybe make a card to go with it that's got the embossed feature on it that matches perfectly. And that's cut from stamping card, did you say? It is, yeah. Awesome. It could be any decent thickness card. It doesn't have to be stamping card. Could I just stick picked a, that. Could, if you didn't have anything that thick, could you stick a couple of bits of thinner cardstock yep. together if you wanted to? Yeah, it just wants like to be a decent thickness. If you think we're going to emboss with it we need a decent thickness to be able to press it into a card so what I'm going to do is I've brought out our uh, embossing mat so this is what you would normally use to emboss your dikes with so I'm going to pop that face down on my cutting mat let me just make sure I get this the right way around and then I've got a piece I've brought uh, mirror card because it shows up really well on the mirror card so again I've just cut this down slightly larger than my die cut and I'm going to put that face down I hope I get this right then I'm going to put my die cut on the back 
and the idea is is I want to press this into the squidgy mat okay now whenever we use an embossing mat we don't need the magnetic mat so I'm just bringing in the plastic shim so you and never have the embossing and the magnetic together? Pardon? Never have the embossing and the magnetic together? No. Well, that's a top tip. I didn't know that, Jan. Yeah. So when you're embossing a die, a metal die, you would never have the magnetic mat in with your embossing mat. It would make it too thick. And it's probably the top way of damaging your embossing oh. mat. Okay. So once we've got that together, just keep everything crossed that I've done it the right way around. Otherwise, we're going to have a debossed image instead of an embossed image. But either way, it works. So we pass that through, and again, it's, it's small enough to go on the junior plates. I just happen to have got the large ones out here. And what that's done is because we've got a decent thickness of cardstock, it's pretended to be an embossing folder. And when we actually pull this off now, can you see how it's transferred that detail? How Awesome. Onto the front of your. So you've made oh, your own embossing folder. Made in my own embossing folder. And that could folder. also then be used as a stencil. I'm guessing if you wanted it, it to be. It could be used as a stencil. These look great. The top layer. If you just cut one side out and use the top layer. If you like colouring, they're fantastic to just colour in the details inside. You've got that little well to sort of keep you inside the colouring. How brilliant would that look coloured in with the new glitter pens, Joe? Yeah. In oh. The gaps. Yes. Piece of white cardstock underneath and then colour in with the glitter pens. It would look. Tr Hello. Honestly. Yes, So please. yeah, this was my little find. It may have been done before and I apologise if someone else has done it out I've there. Never but seen this it. was a bit of a, re a revelation to me. And I just thought if you look on the back, you can see you've got the deboss side there on the back of it. I thought, yep. in my head, I thought you'd have had to cut it out of something much more substantial, Jan, like nope. something like Doflex or nope. uh, Mount Board or something like that. This I didn't is quite it rigid. Just been cardstock. Yeah, well, I picked a decent cardstock because it was quite rigid and that's why I cut the four layers instead of the two. I wouldn't go much more than four because if you get it really thick, you will start cracking the front of your, especially if you're using Miricard. But when I did it with the four layers, there's no cracking at the front there at all. But yeah, actually turns your dies into an embossing and you can do that with any of them just layer them up it looks terrific on the uh, mirror card but it would work on you could emboss it onto any cardstock awesome. do it onto plain cardstock you could catch the top with your inks like we do with the uh, using the ink technique absolutely brilliant love it yep. jan thanks for that there you uh, let go let me just run you through the options that you got with these double-sided dies uh you've got your christmas tree in here oh christmas tree uh, this one here is uh snowflake kisses uh, then we have uh, Frosted Woodland, which is this one here, uh, that gorgeous stag there, as you can see. Uh, the next one we've got is the Festive Ornaments. Uh, you also have the Pretty Poinsettia. And finally, Oh Little Town as well, uh, which is this one just here, which is brilliant. Uh, very busy on these, whether you're getting them as a whole collection. Uh, if you're getting them the whole, as a whole collection and you're in the club, uh, that price goes down to 70, oh, as a pl uh, platinum member in the club, £77 or $93, uh, which is awesome. Uh, you can get them individually, $24.99 or $29.99, but if you get two, that price becomes £40 or $50. So it's completely up to you how you want to get your hands on these. Some of you sent pictures in, which I absolutely adore. Uh, Betsy sent this one in to us. Oh, I love that, Jan, with that... Uh, embossing folder oh sorry i was just getting ready oh that's got the peony one on it hasn't it fabulous how awesome is that yeah that looks here. as if it's had i don't know if it's ink on it or whether that's a um, a gilding wax over the top mary of it that's sent, really pretty mary sent this next one in as well love this that's the, the the layering snowflakes done there yeah so that's the what like the one that we've just done with the poinsettia that would work absolutely brilliantly with that technique i've just done with the embossing the only reason i picked the poinsettia is because i was working with it but the snowflake one would look stunning done as an embossing folder larry cut it out larry took just like i did with the other one and pop it through with your embossing mat but absolutely gorgeous i think there's a little bit of mirror card on there as well joe mm, isn't there and look yeah. at that snowflake on the front just to echo it Yes, yeah, gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah. Really, really lovely. Thanks for that, Mary. Uh, now, don't forget, whatever you're buying with us here, uh, whether you are shopping at Crafter TV, across the Crafter Companion website, or in one of our stores, of course, uh, everyone is going to be able to avail of our club discount. And of course, that club is Club Inspired. Here's Sarah to tell you all the details. Welcome to Club Inspire, our free loyalty club. As a member of the club, you can save up to 20% every time you shop with us. For every pound you spend, whether it's in one of our stores or on our website, you'll collect one loyalty point. The more points you have, the more benefits you'll receive. As a welcome present, we'll give you 20% discount with your very first order. 
Once you place your first order, you'll be given 250 points straight away, making you a bronze member. This will mean that you'll receive a 5% discount on all of your purchases until the end of the next calendar year, plus priority postage. 500 points takes you up to silver membership, where you'll get 10% discount plus free shipping when you spend over £20. When you get to 750 points, you'll become a gold member, which gets you a whopping 15% discount on every order and will ship them to you completely free, no matter how big or small they are. Spend over £25 and we'll send them to you via our premium next day delivery courier service. When you reach 1500 points, you'll become a Platinum member, giving you the same shipping benefits as a Gold member, but with the added bonus of a massive 20% discount on all of your purchases. Now on top of that, you'll receive exclusive discounts, sneak peeks of brand new products, special offers and money saving vouchers. You'll have access to an exclusive secret Facebook group to meet like-minded friends, to find out information first and to be inspired by all the crafty makes. We'll send you a completely free quarterly ditchy mag direct into your inbox giving you lots of hints, tips, inspiration, additional offers and some sneaky behind the scenes gossip from the team. So what are you waiting for? Become a member of our club today. Does she see sneaky behind the scenes gossip? Oh, we don't do gossip here at Crafters TV, no. <laughs> We're not about gossip at all, Jan, are we? No. We hate it. No. <laughs> believe that you believe anything uh, right <laughs> let me uh, just share with you these stamps and dies we're going to go back to these because they were proved so busy at the start of the show uh, and they're awesome uh, so there's a few different ones in here for you so you've got the reason for the season which is that lovely nativity scene if you've got a nativity nature's garden collection this would go beautifully with that as well this one here is the festive flurry that you've got which is absolutely awesome uh, then we've got also the decorative garland uh, my mum would love that one one. In here you're getting then the festive reef, you've got the festive foliage and of course the decorations for the tree. You also have as well uh, the beautiful baubles as well, stamps and dies in here. Uh, so it means that uh, you've got something really awesome. But the thing is Jan, I mean these are like layering stamps with coordinating dies, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, it just sort of like, it's like taking it to that next level. You know, we've done layering stamps on their own, we've got dies on their own, but why not put them together? Now, I know a lot of people like fussy cutting, and I do, I must admit, I like fussy cutting things out and just sort of trimming things out. But to have the die with it, I think the beauty of that is, like Joe mentioned earlier, if you're making batch making Christmas cards, if you like to choose a design and then make multiples of it, these are perfect because you know you're going to get exactly the same thing used in conjunction with that stamping platform so that you can position things you know accurately you can literally just go on a production line you could stamp all the bits out then you could do all the die cutting have all your card blanks ready and literally just go on like a production line and I know a lot of ladies and gents do that and they have just that one or maybe a couple of designs for their Christmas cards whereas other people like to make a different card per person for that person you know you think of that person think what would they like I suppose it depends how many you're making I don't make a vast amount of Christmas card so I tend to sort of go with pairing it up with who I'm making it for rather than doing a batch of things um, but I know we've I've, I've I've had ladies when I was teaching ladies that make them for the forces they make them for charities all sorts of different things so as I say the batch making these are perfect for so we're going to come in back uh, with the festive wreath this time I've stayed sort of quite festive poinsettia sort of foliagey ones this time and we're actually going to make a piece of uh, decor this time rather than a card so that again if you're wanting to make your own handmade gifts for Christmas you know we can't get out and about the same as we have done in the past so being able to make something handmade and gift it at Christmas is beautiful so you've actually got the means to cut out the little poinsettia which is in the stamp set and then this larger one is what will cut out the wreath once you've stamped it now again I've not used this element of it today I'm just using the stamping parts but you could just as easily cut it out like we said with the first one raise it up on foam pads and have like that tiered decor part effect with it so I'm just going to pop those to one side and have a look at the stamp set so let me just get that clear plate again so that you can see these a bit better but again going back to that layering system you can see at the background here we've got number one is actually the sort of frondy part of the wreath so it's got like the um, you know the fur um, 
branches in it and things like that number two is the holly and it adds the holly into it and then number three puts the little berries onto the holly and it's all been thought out perfectly so that it lines up use it in conjunction with that platform again which I'm going to show you and then you've also got two layers for the poinsettia so you can do the green underneath to make the leaves and then add the top layer with the red similar to what we did on the first one but in this one you get lots of extras and I've been playing with those ready so that it didn't take too long so you've got these lovely little stamped um, branches there so I've done those in the green you can see those there you've got little holly leaves again which I've just stamped out in the green these extra elements don't have a die but I've just sat and fussy cut those out so I've got a couple of those uh, I've done some of the poinsettias ready which are from the green layer from the bottom and then the red layer from the top and I've used the die to cut those out and then you also get at the bottom here these gorgeous little baubles so again played with the inks and you can see here where I've just stamped and fussy cut the little baubles out we're going to have a play with those and use those as some decoration as well so just pick some of the inks stayed with the quick dry inks again because they actually work really well with your layering stamps and then you might recognize this one from earlier i had a couple of these left from that first demo so i thought oh, why not awesome. why not mix and match a little bit of cross so we've got loads of foliage at the ready but what we do need to do is stamp up our wreath so let's bring the stamping platform back in i was meant to be going to a wreath making workshop you know on the 17th of jan oh I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to go or not yet. Do you know, it's rubbish, and, isn't it? I was going to go and make my own wreath, yeah. with a, uh, being taught by a florist, which would have been fun. You try not to dwell on it, you know, because it does get you down. But at the end of the day, it is rubbish, isn't it, really? Oh, it is. There's no two words for it, it other than it's just rubbish. It's just a bit rubbish, rubbish, isn't it? Things have just been a bit rubbish. Yeah. But we'll get there, Jan. We'll get there in the end. Right, so like we were saying with the first one, choose a spot on your grid and I've just gone for the top corner of where the crosshair is I've got the corner of my stamp in this sort of top quadrant here these four squares so it's actually sat in there so as long as I put each stamp section in the same place you've got the confidence of knowing that that's going to go into the right place so all I need to do now is line up my card so that we've got that in the right place to receive the uh... oh that wasn't a bad guess so just a little bit further that way, just to make sure that this is in the middle. OK, and then I'm going to use, I'm still battling with the sticky platform, Joe. Oh, no. Honestly. It's, honestly, is that Debbie Fisher? It's like, we keep saying we're going to clean it. And then when it get to the end of the show, you forget all about you it. Just, you could just, we'd, we'd pause the show for you if you wanted to clean it now, you know, Joe. <laughs> we, can, we can wait, honestly. So I've got the same three colours that we worked with earlier, quick dry ink. So I've got the pine tree, which is the darkest of the greens. And again, nice light tapping. All right. With that sponge applicator in the quick dries, it will splodge everywhere if you press it down. So just nice light tapping around there to ink it up. And then we're going to flip it over and pretty much I've sort of gone. It may not be quite central, but forgive me. Give it a press. Let that ink absorb into the card. I'm using Nina cardstock again here. You could use the stamping card. You could use a watercolour card. But I think just that layer on its own looks terrific. It really does. And, and again, you know, if I actually bring the die off the... Um, the sheet here you can see what I would do with these is the first time I used it I would work out which is the right way because obviously you've got elements that looks pretty good and what I would do is I would mark an area on the stamp and I would mark an area on the die with a permanent pen just so that it's quick to line up each time you use it so that you don't have to do the is it this way is it this way every time you use it so just on the back of your stamp pop a little dot and then when you've got it lined up and then you can always stamp it with that at the top you've got your dot on here to line it up perfectly and pass it through your machine to die cut so just a little tip for that but we're going to go back to the next layer so bring out the old cloth again give it a rub and that's all i do <laughs> behave behave i can oh, hear him chuckling what am i like uh, mary <laughs> says uh, so awesome i learn something new every time i watch crafters tv uh marilyn pico says joe can you tell jan she's been amazing today i'm so Aww. inspired and i've learned so so much how lovely Bless. is that uh eleanor Thank as you. well so she's been having a great time watching the show that's I'm lovely glad you've been having a lovely time i've been having a lovely time have you had a lovely time so far jan i love doing it i actually love doing it and i think that's what makes oh 
I would love doing it if we got it in the right place. <laughs> Do you know, if we put it on the right side of the platform, it would work better, guys, wouldn't it? Oh, my days. That's because I got distracted then. Pop it on the right side. We go underneath there instead of on the top. And then it's in the right place to go over the top. No, it's not. Oh, what's happening to me? Was it that one? <laughs> this is why it's best to make a mark on your stamping platform. You heard me say earlier that my one at home has got a little mark on top. Yes, we're there. Yeah. There we we're go. there so it's that one i need the top left corner because i've got another layer to go yet it's getting late <laughs> right so grasshopper we're going to come to the middle there and this is the ivy leaves now so again nice and light tapping just to ink up that stamp as gentle as you can be just to get that onto the little ivy leaves rather than all over the stamp pop it down and then this is positioned perfectly as if you were building up your own wreath and popping the ivy into the gaps it then starts to fill in the foliage there look absolutely beautiful so quick scrub again back onto my sheet top left corner remember guys top left corner Jan so where we need layer three Bottom and this is corner. all marked so on your uh, on your sheet it's got the numbers on where the dies are so you don't have to do any guessing it's all marked so turn it over jan and go for the top do left you talk one. to yourself and I to do. your craft when you're I at do. home i talk to myself i talk to the equipment and my husband blessing me be like you're talking to me <laughs> no love no no you're fine and i'm just muttering away to myself in the craft room honestly i get better advice from myself than i do from him <laughs> Here we go look so again just nice and light round there this is just the berries so it just wants a really gentle touch uh, the full it's range of quick drying pads are available over on the website as well so do check out the full range uh, over there uh, if you want to grab these and these are perfect i'm guessing for this kind of uh, layering stamp. they are because if i show you this joe now ready i've just put those red berries on there which red ink would be a nightmare right we're ready <laughs> Way oh look no smudging at all absolutely dry instantly the minute it touches paper awesome. it will stay wet on your stamp because this is actually non-porous -por uh, surface but on the non-porous surface on cardstock it will dry instantly so that's why i like to use the quick dry inks for the layering because obviously with bits going over another layer if the ink's not dry you could contaminate the colors and end up with a third color yeah okay. so it is worth using them if you've got them uh they are available on the website they're the same color family as what we have in all the other ink ranges so they fit in nicely with the other uh, the other inks that we've got so let me pop that back on the carrier sheet and cover that up so it doesn't get dirty because i've done all the other stamping so what i did next and again i'm just going to move to one that i did at home because i brought in you know the technique i did with the um texture paste the, the modeling paste and the aqua tints if i bring this one in next to it you can see we've added a few extra berries going on here and all i did here was choose the solar red which i think is in the winter warmer set if i'm i may okay. be wrong there solar red i think it i'm is. gonna check yep and all i've done is use the end of, i've mixed it with the texture paste i've used the end of my paintbrush and literally just made a few extra berries but these are actually raised. summertime jam summertime forgive me these are actually raised because it was modeling paste so you've got again a little bit of texture going on in there okay <coughs> excuse me right so what i've done this time then is i've made um a frame so oh, literally I love this frame. Is that seven a card by card? seven card frame all right so you could actually put a card on the back of it to make it open into a card but i wanted to go more for sort of a bit of a home decor theme so what i'm planning to do is again i've got a piece of the the gold which is going to go into the back so let's stick that in there straight away we'll pop that in with a bit oops i had visions of you not getting oh <laughs> Oh. oh dear, we've had a we've had, an oh, we've had a landslide. I had visions of you not getting that uh, gold card back out of there, you know. Did you? Yeah. Oh, I, I could faith. just see it. I could just I see faith, it. Faith, honestly. So again, I'm just going to pop that in the back to make like a little um, background because the other piece is cut slightly smaller. Now my frame is seven by seven inches, so the inside will be a five inch square because I did an inch all the way round. Okay. So I'm just going to pop that in the back and then this one's just a wee bit smaller so that you've got a little bit of that gold showing around the outside. So I just need to give that glue a chance to stick in the bottom there because the craft stock's really fibrous. It just needs a second for the glue 
to grab okay and then i thought what we'd do is pop some foam pads i've got oh i've just got three left so we'll have to be a bit uh a bit, a bit frugal a bit stingy again joe yeah <laughs> just use those three there just to give it a lift this one's still curling up it's very warm under the lights but it will stick down you will stick down trust me <laughs> <laughs> could you then, leave something on it if you wanted to like yes, a weight you could. on it yeah yeah you see you know when you're working at home you've got all the time of and course. yeah you could put something in there that's heavy while you did your stamping you know prepare this bit first totally different when we're on the tv isn't it so i even wrote that this was the top look t for top T for top, it's all there. Look, all the bits and pieces. So now we've got to get that in there and just leave a little frame all the way around there. Okay? Awesome. And then we've got all that um, foliage then to decorate with. So again, I've used some of that textured cardstock, Joe, from the, uh, the 12 by 12 pads. Awesome. I That's made your new favourite, is it? Oh, I love them. <laughs> How did you guess? I know. I, I like anything that's got texture on it. Anything that's got texture is a winner. Yeah. So this is one of the green ones out of the, uh, I think it's orange, yellows and greens in that one. And again, I've put a bit of um, foam tape on the back of here. So oh, it'll misbehave again. It always does look when you come on TV. You pull it off at home and it comes straight off. I come here and it just, it's naughty. There's no two it ways for it. Look, that one's really playing up. It doesn't like travelling. I think that's what it is. I don't know, know what it, it is. Like I think it's in. the heat from the lights that plays with it because the lights in here are really, really warm. But as long as we can get enough off it to uh, to stick it down, I can always add a little bit of extra glue. So Absolutely. just just talk amongst yourselves well, for okay, a okay, second. No, no, I, I get this myself. Off, Joe. Well, tomorrow, you know, I just want to give you a heads up. Of course, tomorrow it's the start of our Black Friday uh, celebrations uh, here um at crafts tv uh, and it all kicks off uh, tomorrow uh, with myself and bernie there's a softer side of life black friday special and i kid you not it is shut the front door shut the back door ride the reindeer up the street naked and kiss the milkman from us <laughs> from from a, in a covid secure wear your mask <laughs> maybe air kiss the milkman is what we'll be doing uh, because it, the deals are that amazing you will love that show uh so make sure you join me that'll be uh, 1 p.m uh, uk time which is 8 a.m east coast time and then that's kind of like the unofficial launch really because officially we'll be launching uh, a lot of the black friday deals in the launch party and that'll be with my Sar myself and sarah at 4 p.m for you tomorrow uh, which is 11 a.m east coast time uh, and then wednesday i've got an awesome sale masterclass a christmas sale masterclass with the lovely debbie robinson and then also we've moved because with um thanksgiving being on thursday this week we've moved cartload to wednesday so we're going to do the big black friday cartload for you uh, on wednesday i won't be here then ben's with you for thanksgiving in a couple of days after that i'll be back sunday u.s warehouse clearance hello black friday special so there's loads coming up this week jan there is isn't there it's a busy old be, week i'll be glued to my tv trying not to press the button every few minutes to play, <laughs> press buy honestly when i'm at home i'm a customer just like everybody else platinum one at that needless to say yep right so i've got my frame stuck on now it was fighting back that i don't know what was going off there and then literally all i'm going to do is add some of that foliage to it so we'll bring the glue gun back in i've made a little sentiment to go in the middle there again just stamped out and it says on there have a jolly holiday so that's going to go in the center of the wreath there and then if anybody was watching uh, last weekend, you saw me with all the uh, the foam. So I've got a few bits of foam left that were uh, hanging around Ooh. from that one. So I'm going to add this in with the card uh, embellishments as well. I love that well. as an idea of adding yep. foam Mix on, and match. As, a flat, as a flat element. Yep. So you don't have to use the iron to heat it. I just thought, you know, a little bit of that in there as well is actually going to make a great addition to my foliage. And again, just mentioning those little... Um, strands that we get from the heat tool if you do get bogged down with those and get loads of them when you've finished your project and it's dry bring your heat tool in and very gently just waft it over those strands and it will dissolve all the glue term, disappear um, wafting 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 is technical good solid term. technical term so i've actually got a few bits um from the stamp set so we've actually got those little pine branches there and again this is just you know personal to everybody so much great texture you, in this though you pop on there whatever you want you know i've got some of the holly leaves which also come in the set okay 
just going to build up a little cluster in this corner please be careful if you're using the hot glue gun i no longer have fingerprints anymore <laughs> and then we've got um we've got one of those from earlier we'll pop one of those in the corner down there okay and then what i've done is i've got some flat poinsettias which are from the stamp set and i'm going to pop those one at the top of my wreath as if we're decorating the wreath one here and then one up there so we've gone for sort of three around the wreath to embellish the wreath and then i'll use that one at the top we'll pop her oh i've got a foam pad on that one look oh a rogue just foam pad a rogue foam pad just for a little bit of extra dimension and then if we did want some of those little baubles in, I thought they might just tuck in under here, look, just to sort of add them. Again, it's all preference, you know, you decorate however you wish. But just at the idea of making a gift for someone rather than an actual uh, card, you could make a, a matching card to go with it. Because the stamps, you can recreate it as many times as you wish. And again, if I turn you that one round now, take much much more care at home you won't have all these extra bits i've got the hairs on it now that i was talking about look but when i turn you that one round just to make something a little bit more 3d just to give us a gift rather than a card and as i say these are great because you can actually stick a card to the back of them oh, yeah. and make this the front of your card if you wish oh lovely or maybe just a nice note stuck to the back would yep. be lovely yeah what i would do with this if i was going to give it as a, a greeting is i would make a panel to go on the back and maybe stamp a greeting in the middle and then write my own message on the back of it lovely yep. really really nice so that's that layer and again just because you've got those stamps to go back to you know i know we're struggling at the minute because we're not getting out and about but in the past when we've been doing craft fairs and things like that these are easy to create uh, you could personalize them if you've got the alpha alphabet dies and things like that absolutely beautiful really really gorgeous okay. uh, now i want to wish you through what you're getting in this collection uh, so you've got the reason for the season which is this lovely nativity scene just here then we've got this one which is your festive flurry very snow queen that one isn't it the next one here is decorative garland uh, which is beautiful this reminds me of calamity jane or like a uh, a western saloon you know they always have like the big curtains hanging up really reminds me of those uh this one here is your festive reef which you've just seen jan demonstrating there then you've got the festive foliage which is this one just here uh the decorate the tree and also then those festive uh, those beautiful baubles uh, actually uh, as well uh loads that you can do uh with these as well 68 pounds if you are in the uk uh, that becomes 54.40 as a platinum member uh, if you're in the us 90 dollars uh, which becomes a 72 dollars as a platinum member so really really good uh, value uh, there with these and you're getting lots of them only two of them uh, are available individually, by the way. Festive wreaths and the foliage. Uh, the rest of them uh, are only available in the collection. So, um, Jan, lots of other things that you can do with these as well. Were you reconstructing over there? I'm trying. <laughs> I, I've just given up on it now. It's getting late, and I just think the more I mess with it, the worse it's going to make it. So, I'm just going to leave it as it is. Yeah. So, I've just got a few samples. We had a quick look through them earlier, but just to give you an idea of what you can do with those stamping and layering dies that we've just been looking at, that's that lovely garland that Joe was talking about. And again, you imagine that across the top of a scrapbook page you know if you've got a festive page for christmas where you've taken some photos stamp this out several times and run it the whole way across a 12 by 12 inch scrapbook page would be a stunning decoration and again you can layer it up you could put as much um either foam under there or the 3d glue gel just to give it some dimension if it was a page that you were going to i know you some people have them stood out on easels to show if it was going in a book then obviously keep it flat but absolutely stunning they don't have to just be cards that was the wreath that we've just had a play with but just by layering it onto some extra nesting layers look how much bigger that one looks from the one that I've just done there so just by actually increasing it with some layers behind it you can see that we've got a much bigger uh, space filled with that one so again you know go for it I love this idea with the uh, the embossing folder behind it 
that is that's a favorite of mine that embossing powder i think it was old christmas carol a couple of years ago but again mix and match them with things that you've got in your stash with paper pads that you've already got in your stash you know it's a stamp and die set doesn't have to work on its own that's that gorgeous corner that we did at the beginning at the top of the show and then we've got the lovely christmas tree and the layer comes with the baubles that you can decorate it again decorate those baubles with those glitter pens and get a little bit of shim shimmer going on on that would be beautiful okay love the baubles again you could go to town whatever color you wanted and this is you know personalizing again if you're sending it to someone that you know has got i don't know my, my christmas tree is decorated in champagne and red so you could make it in the colors that match so that you've got it there for that person and it's personalized beautiful nativity see you can't go wrong with that at christmas i just love that one and then that starburst stamp behind it just to actually embellish the uh, the actual die cut elements of it and then the last one i've got there is that gorgeous um snowflake flurry so again layering it up and you've got all the extra snowflakes that you can have a play with and build up it's a proper flurry going on on that one there isn't it but again change the color it would look totally different imagine it in black and white just in monochrome would look gorgeous mm, really, yep. really lovely lots you, can, lots you can do with those 68 yep. pounds or 90 dollars i want to whiz you through the embossing folders as well whilst we're here these are also a really recent launch and a great price when really when you think about it to get uh, six of these 32 pounds or 46 dollars which is awesome uh, You've got some uh, six gorgeous options. So you've got the uh, Gossamer. Well, I say options. Most people are going to get them all together. I know they are. I love this leopard. I think it's like a most beautiful uh, snow leopard. I think it's really, really lovely. Oh, you've also then got here as well the Vintage Scroll. Then you've got the Peony, which is that one there, as well as the Climbing Ivy. And then the Grande Butterfly, the Big Schmetterling. Uh, £32 or $46 gets you all of these. And embossing folders, really awesome, Jan, aren't they? Whether they're the focal point of your project, whether they're just going to be, uh, you know, a little bit of added texture in there, they can really play lots of different roles in your projects. They can. And again, as I say, go to elements. Embossing folders, you can do such a lot with them. Um, you know, I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd love to have more time to spend with you. I really would because, you know, we, we show you elements during the two hour show, but there is so much more that you can do. I've just pulled out these the, another set of sample boards here just to show you them rather than on a card front, just with that gilding wax to highlight areas there. But imagine those background that could have been just as simply with the aqua tints that we used earlier. It can be done with your inks. You've got the uh, the gilding wax over the top of that one, but you can highlight with the inks as well. So, you know, you could have done the background with the aqua tints and then used an ink to highlight the, the detail of the top. So that swirl is beautiful. Again, think about fussy cutting. Cut the swirls out to add to something else. You know, don't necessarily think of it as a whole. If you were watching me last week, we used that um, leopard print one and we cut it up and we made a square card out of a five by seven folder just by expanding it and cutting it up. So again, that's that gorgeous, very sexy, the leopard, leopard print one there. Oh, so sexy. It's lovely. And then we've got that beautiful peony one. Love this one. I mean, that, that, it, that's just a card front in its own right. Let me just find you the card for that one because it was lovely that I showed you earlier. Just have a look at that. You know, we've done a stepper card there. We've chosen one of the, um, this side, Jan. Yeah, I always forget with the opposite rye rye. And one of those lovely uh, stamp sentiments from the large verse collection. And then you've got that beautiful peony coloured just to pick out the detail there. Gorgeous. And then the last three, you saw me use the ivy one to make the aperture card earlier. And then we've got that beautiful butterfly one. Absolutely gorgeous. Love and that. then you've got that. And again, this one, we said, you know, again, fussy cut those two corner pieces out, do it twice, and then reassemble them to make a frame. You've got those beautiful ornate frames with a photograph inside. Again, you could be making a home decor piece. Screams out, I think, for that, mm, that one. Really, beautiful. really beautiful. Gorgeous. Yep. Super gorgeous. Uh, right, I want to remind you, if I may, of the Monday mega deal as well, because you've only got 24 hours to get your hands on this. Loads of awesome stuff in here for you. You've got some Collow All Purpose glue uh we've also got uh your uh craft knife in there uh you're gonna get the craft knife with five blades you've got the tweezer selection as well which is absolutely awesome you've got those scissors in there 
and you've got that edge crimper in there too. So it's a really awesome collection of core tools. But then what you've also got uh, is this caddy as well for it to all go into. Now you've got four pockets on the side, uh, three pockets on the front, one with that little flap. So that's gonna have really important things in there like maybe a little chocolate based snack that you're gonna have whilst you're crafting. <laughs> uh, and then you've got three pockets uh, on the inside of here as well. Four pockets, sorry. I'm short changing you there. And what's awesome about it is that it's all such gorgeous, gorgeous quality. It's beautifully designed, it's piped, it's really, really lovely. Uh, you've got a hard bottom in there uh, which you can take out uh, if you want to now I'm pretty sure I didn't do it effectively earlier but I was pretty sure that it um that it folds flat it does there fold flat yep. I thought I was imagining it earlier when I opened it yep. up but yeah because of that zip it does fold flat uh, if you want it to I'm not sure why you'd want to fold it flat but if you do absolutely you can uh, I think these would be awesome not just as a crafting tote I can see these couldn't you in a bathroom uh, Jan yes as a little desk course, organizer maybe things like that in your yeah. bedroom yeah and it matches bedrooms. the rest of the range. If you've got any of the uh, totes from the rest of the range, that fabric on there matches them all, including the big wheelie one. Oh, awesome. So you've got a full set there. Yeah, you could actually collect the set. Yeah, you could. It's really, really good. I love this uh, Crafter Companion purple floral print that you've got. £30 or $44 if you want to get your hands on that, which is awesome. Don't forget to check out your basket as well. Remember, you uh, can shop anytime you want to over on the website, craftscompanion.co.uk.com or .eu. Couple of pictures uh, as well that have been sent in. Teresa sent this one. I love this colorway, don't you, That's Jan? That's gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah, it just looks stunning. It really does. They make such pretty cards. Just a sentiment on it and you're done. Mm, absolutely. Yep. And Janet Avery sent us this next one in as well with that Christmas tree. That's the layering stamps there, isn't mm. it? Yeah, with those lovely baubles on. Yeah. a couple of different ones, actually in a sort of slightly different styles which yeah, I Yeah, really it just love. shows you how versatile they are though, doesn't it? Because the mm. same stamp but look totally different. Yeah, absolutely yeah? it can. Uh, right, huge uh, thanks to Jan. It's always a pleasure. Jan, do you know when you're back with us? I'm back next Monday. Ooh. I'm doing the earlier show me. next week though. I've got a masterclass next week That'll again. That'll be with me. Yes. Awesome. Yes, we're back Hang again. On. I know what it is. I've forgotten. You've forgotten? Yeah, what is it? It's nesting dies and ah, scoreboards. Yeah. Is. I'm gonna get my thinking it. cap on again and see if I can come up with something a bit oh. different for you. Can I can I do some can I do requests for because Jan is, you know, a whiz when it comes to the card concepts. Can I, if I have a little think, can I request some? Ooh. Oh, that's Ooh. a no. Uh, <laughs> Maybe. We will see. Maybe. There was we'll one see. that I love. It's the TP that I love. Oh, I can do I one of those. I love the TP. Yeah. And we had those yeah. magnets on it. All right, brilliant. Yep. It's a date. I'll see you back here next Monday. Next Monday. Fantastic. Fabulous. Make Thank sure you. you join us uh, as well. Uh, of course, uh, all of the Black Friday fun starts tomorrow, which is awesome. So you're going to want to make sure you're here with me at 1 p.m. UK time, 8 a.m. Eastern time uh, for the unofficial launch with the soft side and then the proper big launch with myself and Sarah will be 4pm UK time 11am East Coast I'll see you back here tomorrow for that massive thanks to Jan big thanks to the team next door biggest thanks goes to you guys uh, as well at home enjoy the rest of your day if you are uh, across stateside getting ready for Thanksgiving uh, if you're here in the UK I hope you have a wonderful evening and we will see you back here tomorrow take care